burn something apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that's funny because I was with I was at I was at Shisha with them oh. and it was like yeah, it was like 12:30 and I'm like all right, like should I go to bed here and they're like we're going back to train. So uh that's it's interesting to hear that context, but um I mean both these players have been around for so long. And here we are, game number one in a best of five between two former teammates, two players that are True. very close friends and know each other very well. We've got Jordan in the blue playing as the Portuguese. We have Tato in the red playing as the Tatars. The map is Arabia, a map that everyone should know and love at this event. And uh, with me, I've got Hart, a very capable Arabia player. Yeah, this is my bread and butter. And it's a very interesting match. A Portuguese being the more aggressive and Tatars usually wanting to take it a bit slower. Also, we get a normal uh, Arabia generation. It's not a KOTD style of map. Usually, KOTD uh, lets you be a bit more aggressive just because there's more food on the map through the rhinos. And Portuguese usually are the ones that would enjoy that since they're just a more aggressive sieve in general. Uh, Tatars do eventually outscale Portuguese, though. So, in this kind of matchup, I would say Jordan will want to use his bonuses early on as much as possible, maybe try to get a small lead here and there, and then try to snowball off that, while Tato uh, will probably be more likely to play around the Castle Age timing with Expos and such, or just try to turtle the game till later, when Tatars just outscale Portuguese. Okay, so you're thinking, when you say outscale, what comp are you talking about here? Are you thinking like Cav Archer Hussar for the Tatars against Portuguese, or something else? Yeah, I, I mean... Or for the, yeah, for the Tatars, yeah. They, they kind of outscale in every way, they have a better Hazard. Well, they have Hazard, first of all, yeah. with also more armor and Pierce armor than Portuguese who only get Lycav. Uh, Portuguese get Arbalest, but Tatars get CA, which also have extra Pierce armor, right? Okay, okay. Uh, yep. And also Keshik are an insane unit here, which Portuguese can only deal with with Halps. And I think they miss Squires, if I remember correctly. They do. So, yeah, like overall, late, late temp or late, not necessarily late team, late game, uh, it really favors Tatar. So I think it's going to be on Jordan to try to get something done early on. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to see here, but if you just look at the middle of the map, look at all the hills that are scattered throughout. The Tatars will do more damage when fighting on top of those hills. So, I mean, I've seen quite a few Arabia games, and I don't know if the hill has been quite this expansive through the middle. I know there are hills, but this is a really good generation for the Tatars. Uh, Jordan, I liked his build order here. The Portuguese get a little bit of wood from their berries. And some players will still just like take their berries at a normal time after a lumber camp. They don't adapt their builds to it. But he actually had the mill with four villagers there and then delayed his lumber camp. And it just like gives him that extra edge because it might be hard to compete with the Tatars, let's say, with food. Uh, Tatars getting more food from their sheep. And it looks like right now both players up around the same time. Yeah, uh, when it comes to the berry timing for Portuguese, it's a bit interesting because the earlier you use it, technically, the more impact it has on your economy early, right? Yep. Uh, since you have less villagers, then having uh, people on berries earlier will give you a, 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 like a better increase of resources compared to the enemy. But also, it means they run out faster, which means that at some point, if you're not careful, you might have like an economy collapse. Yeah. Where you just run out of berries and you have four villagers idle, and where do you send them? So if you're not careful and make a good transition, that can backfire a lot. And I've seen that happen at the highest level many times. So personally, I think, <laughs> like in my eyes, that's like a bit of grief in the Portuguese <laughs> because I, I see it failing more often than not. Really interesting. See, I, I'm the opposite, man. I've got this 18 pop scout build down uh, with the Portuguese where I go to the berries early. But uh, this is where... You know, someone who casts with me more frequently would say, well, what has that done for you, T90? And I, <laughs> you know? Where are you now? Well, where am I now? I'm also out, so. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, I mean, listen. I'm here with you, man. Listen, we're both invited. We're, we're, well, actually, no, you had to qualify. Shoot, I, I apologize, but uh, you know what I mean. Anyways, both up at the same time here. Scouts find each other there. And uh, we got a stable there from Jordan. The expectation is the exact same there from Tato. This will be, um, I, I think we'll see a lot of this, this series, right? Because every single game seems to be as close to Arabia as the map pool allows. And back to your point, Hart, it could be because both of these players have had such good runs and they're both going to playoffs. That much is guaranteed that they do not want to show future opponents some of their more diverse strategies for other maps. Yeah, I, I expect the, the standard opening for this series to be just both <laughs> scouts as we see Jordan going in and leaving some ships. Why is that scout not dead? 
Finally, it dies. It TCs, as we've established many times over a cast this week. You want improved passing, <laughs> something about the arrows, you, you know how it goes. Hey, Howard, this is, listen, this is the biggest platform you have to complain about the pathing, my friend. So use it. <laughs> use it wisely. Use it wisely. <laughs> Burn them as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh, but, okay, uh, sure. If I say anything bad, it's because of tonight. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> well, I mean, that was funny, though. Jordan, and I'd love to see maybe a replay on that at some point. Jordan went in. He could have booped the sheep, but then he expected Tato to garrison. Then Tato didn't garrison. By the time Jordan went back in, Tato did. Little, little silly there from Jordan and very much unlike him to toss away a scout there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially since it's Tatar ship. Like, unless you kill all of them, he will actually, as you can see, he still has one left, right? Yep. So he has enough left uh, to make a smooth transition to farm. So it doesn't hurt him as much as it would hurt any other Sith. For example, if you do that to Britons, you actually kill their economy since they're uh, taking the ship so fast that if you kill two of them, then all of a sudden they have like seven villagers that need to go on straggler trees, and that's terrible. But yep. for Tatars, that's not as much. Yeah, it's, it feels like you don't even know what happened, right? Exactly. Everything's fine. And if anything, transitioning to farms a bit earlier can actually help you in the long term. Yeah. So not a big deal there. Uh, shout out to any sheep, though, that are watching. Sorry you had to see that. Um, archers, right? Right now, players, have got they've, they've got spearmen out. They haven't produced that many scouts. Talk to me about the archer transition and the timing on that, because it's, it's a bit more complicated than... Uh, the the eye can see. Yeah, so it's it's interesting how they're both gonna transition. Uh, most likely both to Expo, right? So the Tars get free tumbering, which gives them an advantage, and also the map is super hilly. But Portuguese have a smoother fuel age thanks to the berry bonus, and they also have a discount on archers, right, on gold. So I think it's gonna be a bit of a, a, about uh, numbers against you know just a bit stronger unit. Uh, with enough micro, the tumbering can be less relevant, but it's still relevant. I think what, what's going to play a big role here could be the hills. And especially if Tato gets to find a good hill to push from, I could see some manganos coming into play. I would say that's like the optimal play when you are in an expo war as uh, Tatars, is to try to make a transition into expo and then use the hills to push. Because if you find a good hill, it's really, really hard to stop you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if like, you know, I, I mean, yeah, the hill... And then, like, the mass that could potentially be there, the free thumb ring, there's a lot of things going into it. Had Tato saw a villager there, chose to back away. Jordan may be keeping an eye on the walls. This is this is smooth and it's clean from these guys. There's been nothing real of note to talk about. Uh, just one kill, one death. But that gold for Tato is pretty abysmal, right? Like, I know that he's got that other gold in the back of his base, so that's nice to fall back to later on. But uh, I got to say, like, if I had to choose a map here, I would choose Jordan's because of having the back gold and, and like, the back wood line to work with. Tata doesn't really even have that. All his wood and all his gold is rather forward here. Yeah, Tata's map is definitely looking a bit worse here. Uh, and that's not what he likes because Portuguese are a faster Sif. As you can see, Jordan's already trying to put a bit of pressure with just one archer and two scouts, right? But that one archer is going to deny the usefulness of the spears if he manages to find a good spot to hit from. So it's a really good move by that uh, by Jordan. It's going to be quite annoying for Tato, as you can see, already denying the bear is Ooh. soon enough. Yeah, it feels like the scouts obviously can't get hits there. The archer could eventually whittle down that spearman and is doing so, but Tato at the same time has his own archers coming back. And that's really well played from both. Tato with some nice damage control, but Jordan forcing some reactions. Would you consider a tower on that gold. Because like right now, Tato's getting pulled a different direction. I know a lot of players will, will hold with army, but what do you I, think? I think you have to hold on the tower. I think that's the, that, that's something you do if you're absolutely desperate, which is not. Also, something to keep in mind, Tato is going up to Castellage faster, but he did skip Horse Caller. Mm. So that's something that might bite him in the ass later on. Okay, got it. Well, we're gonna see the scouts engage here. And in the end, I think Jordan's gonna lose everything, actually. We'll see if Tato can get away. No, Tato cannot. Uh, or Tato can get away, sorry, and Jordan loses the archer. At the end of the day, he just lost one. He's got five archers at the moment. It'll be five archers in a moment for Tato. And, I mean, Tato's still open on that side. That might actually be a good TC area, though, Hart. It's a bit weird because, like, the gold would maybe be priority number one. But that opening has a stone. It has a big wood line. It's also further away from some of the other areas. So I guess we'll see what Tato chooses to do. Yeah, a TC on the stone and the woodland would be perfect. It sets you up quite nicely for uh, for later. We see Horse Caller coming in now for Tato, so he's not forgetting about that. And he's also taking the aggression. You really want to use this uh, early tumbling timing. It, it's kind of huge. Also, 
it's very important for Tato to never uh, miss track of uh, Jordan's expo because a sneak attack on the gold would be just deadly. Mm -hmm. so yep. It looks like Jordan's done a good job on the front of his base. He's built up his buildings there and his houses. So that's the more likely area that Tato would push from and look to break through. And good job from Jordan. I know he might lose the Spearman, but he's just, he's just tracked this so nicely so he knows that Tato's coming to him. And you're kind of, your fingers are crossed right now when you see the boldness of Tato. You're like, I hope he's not up faster than me. <laughs> just moving out, man. <laughs> I mean, he knows he skipped a horse collar, right? So I'm, I'm guessing that's why he assumes he's going to be up faster. Uh, despite Portuguese being, you know, slightly better. Equal. And Jordan has, look at that, Jordan drops a tower because he's scared about this. Now, this is fun right here because not only do you drop a tower because you're worried, but you don't want to have to go chase that because if you chase that army from Tato, and then, the tower. then the tower, then it's like a double whammy, right? Yeah. But here, Jordan says, okay, this isn't great for me, but I could play damage control at home and then I can push Tato. And now Tato's going to have to recognize this too. Because Tato doesn't see Jordan's army, so there's a lot of things playing into this. Jordan going forward to scout Tato, and Tato does not see those archers right now. Yeah, but he sees the scout, which could be an indication. Like, oh, maybe he needs to start being a bit more careful. I'm surprised he was trying to send those three archers forward as well, right? Because you, 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 might, you might be scared of a counterattack, especially since you don't see the archers anymore at Jordan's base. And Jordan rushes uh, university and remember that Portuguese researches text a bit faster. So that's going to help him catch up uh, with the ballistics timing from Tato. Oh, man, Spearman is the warning shot here. And B Thumbring's already in for the crossbows. Plus, you're on the hill if you're Tatars. And ballistics is 10 seconds off. What a crazy timing here for Tato with these techs. It feels like with Tato's tech advantage, even though he's behind in the numbers there, he will be able to defend... Cool as a cucumber there, right? He recognized that he could instead of forcing down a tower himself. He has the hill, so he, he, felt, he felt perfectly comfortable. Uh-oh, he had the hill. Until now, where he starts to lose some units. Uh, Jordan really needs to micro this quite well. Uh, he doesn't have ballistics yet. And also, he is down thumbering, right? Yep. So it's important for him to be really on top of his uh, micro. Yeah, and it feels pretty unrealistic with these economies to research them ring. It is pretty expensive. I think it's around 500 resources in total. Lots of food, lots of wood. Tato lost track of that army. He's getting town watch now, so his buildings will give him more vision. And he correctly calls the angle that Jordan is going to be coming in from as he still just camps at home. Jordan actually still not dealing with that. But Jordan has been able to really sneak around here can we see the Fog of War from Tato, please? Let's see. Oh, he's been so sneaky. Whoa, <laughs> what <a> dude. Rat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let's see. Does Tato react yeah, this to this? Two or three dead villagers. Oh, that's huge for Jordan. Beautiful. You would never expect him to be back there. That's going to be... What? He missed. Tato microed that. No, 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 that, that was RNG, I swear. You think so? You're <laughs> not, mean, giving, not giving credit to Tato <laughs> there? I mean, either, that's, either that was RNG or Tato's a god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be both. Could be both. Could be uh, both. The way Tato's played this tournament, man, I'm not going to take anything away from him. But, yeah, sometimes you are right. Like, you click your villager somewhere, it just happens to, to dodge the shot. Yeah, they're, they're trying to, to go around a corner, and they happen to dodge uh, accidentally. Yeah. Well, now the crossbows are in the very back corner. Tato knows this. Yeah, Jordan knows this, knows this army is dead, right? So he's going to camp the hill and try to get as much value as possible. Yeah, it's going to be harder for him to micro. He, he has the lesser numbers. Of course, his opponent has thumb ring, but you could still dodge the shots. And here we go. If you have a nerdy emote, use it now. These guys are nerding out here. But they, like you said, this is just Jordan buying himself time so he could be safer at home. Yeah. The good old days of Expo War Micro. <laughs> you act like it was that long ago that everyone went crossbow. <laughs> it, it, it feels that way. As we, as look at look at that. Yeah, some Jordan Jordan was microing in the north while also micro uh, sitting on that wood line, and Tato did not realize. And Jordan at the same time has actually defended here. And he's gonna clear that army. And suddenly he's gonna be ahead in army, and that's exactly what Portuguese wants. Eventually, if you manage to outmass as Portuguese and you start to get upgrades on your crossbows, once you get Thumbring, like what's the advantage that uh, mm -hmm. Tatars have? Remember, Tatars don't have Arbalest, so if you manage to get through the game without losing too many Expo as Portuguese, you have a huge time in early Imp with your Arbalest since uh, Tatars missed that upgrade. Yeah, I really like Jordan's position. That said, Tato was adding TC number three. He's had the second one, so he will have a villager lead despite the villager losses. But, I mean, that is a beautiful hill to sit on right there. I feel like, I know they are, that Jordan already has a siege workshop, but in what feels like a crossbow game, 
another siege workshop there would just do wonders. What do you think about that? I think so. Also, it will deny the heals from from uh, Tato, right? If you get the heals for yourself, then the Tars cannot use them. Yeah. So I would love to see uh, Siege Worship right where Jordan's standing right now. It would really change the pace of the game, I think. It would give him the, the lead when it comes to uh, positional uh, positional advantage. And I think also, like, right now, you have you feel like you have to sit on that hill all the time with your crossbows, because if you leave it, you can give it up to the enemy. Mm -hmm. The second you get a building there, th that's yours, right? And Jordan's not going to, or, or Tata, rather, is not going to feel the confidence to move up the hill. Yeah. And T Tato's paying so hard for these two forward woodlands he has, right? In a crossbow game? It's really rough, man. This is not... So much. Yeah, exactly. Like, he would have hoped this would have been, like, a night matchup, right? Like, you know, Franks uh, <laughs> against Berbers or something along those lines instead of crossbow war. Yeah. But Tato still has thumb ring, and Jordan's being extra sneaky today. There, Jordan's trying to catch Tato, actually, and he's going to find him. But there's another army from Jordan that's sneaking as well. We'll see in a second. And they meet each other. Let's see how they dance. Beautiful little dance here. I like the way Jordan's doing it. That's the way I would suggest to most players at home. You just patrol in with your army, and then you just grab the forward ones and click them back and forth. The whole dodging with the whole group thing, a little too much for me, and probably a little too much for most people playing. Or just keep it simple. Patrol in, look away, and make <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> that Well, that's what a lot of people are doing right now, I'm sure. Nice find here from that Tato. He denies that TC. And this is the sneaky army we mentioned from Jordan. This is going to get... I think we're going to see a, a, like one or two huge Manganel shots here. Because they're, they're getting to that point where it's like two or three groups. And they've got exposed areas of their eco. And they, it's super hard to pay attention to everything here. Like, yep. trying to do economy, micro three groups of army. And then the Manganels are going to come in. The hill and with... Like Tatars with a hill, one yep. Mangonel shot, that, that's a whole group of crossbows that... Alright, well if it happens, who's the one doing the screaming? Is that me? That's you, because my throat... <laughs> <laughs> my throat won't allow me to do so. <laughs> okay, 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 got it. Just need to make sure, you know, establish the, the caster dynamic before we get there. It depends, though. If it's good enough, I'll scream as well. <laughs> okay, yeah. alright. So it has to be like 20, 20 dead crossbows, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm looking at the resources right now from Jordan. He's been on stone for a bit. And he just tried to move out. Now, we talked about how bad Tato's map is for a crossbow war. But Jordan's second and third gold forward. So he might want a castle to protect those, or even a castle here as Jordan dances his way up the hill. He's got a massive army advantage here. And Tato, I, I don't think the Scorpions are going to be enough to help him here. Jordan pushing up the hill perfectly as well. Good micro with the guys in the front as Tato starts to switch into elite skirmishers. As, as, as we said, Tato doesn't get Arbalest, so he feels like he's, he needs to start a switch into skirmishers, and that might feel a bit awkward because your economy has been set up for Arbalest or for Expo this whole time, right? Mm -hmm. And Jordan gets a huge castle on that hill. Honestly, that's a game-deciding castle. Like, it controls so much of the map. That, it's insane. Yeah, he could have gone for the safe one, but he pushed out boldly enough. Jordan has had a near-perfect game so far. His eco has been clean. Remember, he had the tower. He was a minute later to castle age, and I feel like so many people who are late to ballistics, late to the next age, die in a crossbow war because they're just you're just kind of doing the same thing. Like Tato had the advantage even with thumb ring and all these hills, but with the Portuguese and the cheap units, Jordan has done a f tremendous job here. And uh, it was funny when I was sitting with Tato last night, having a bit of shisha, talking about age. Uh, he saw the potential lineup. Now, obviously, he's been pushed a bit further back in the day now. But initially, it was going to be Jordan Tato uh, first set. And Tato's first comment was, he's like, uh, I'm going against OP Jordan, man. And, and I was like, what do you mean? He's like, boom, big shot. He's like, because the earlier in the day it is, the better Jordan is. And Jordan gets some big shots there. He is clicking on all, clicking on all cylinders here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jordan's definitely a strong guy in the mornings. So like, <laughs> The guy gets up at 7 a.m., drinks some orange juice, <laughs> goes for a walk, a run, goes to the gym. Like, that's his prime time, man. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's a bit later now. It's like it's like 6 p.m., but yeah, this is maybe the tail end of Prime Jordan. And he's going to be happy to be playing at this time. There's the highlight oh. from that. That is Tato. Like, that is such a small army, right? And it's such a risk. He knows he's behind, right? He's taking a bit of a risk because he feels like he can't do anything right now. Yeah, yeah, he feels cornered. Uh, and, and like he doesn't really have a, a good army to push this back with, right? Because Tatars don't have bombard cannons, which means you're going to rely on traps. But traps are not really something you can rely on when the enemy has bombard cannons himself mm -hmm. with siege, siege engineers. Uh, Tatars do get an upgrade to have extra range on, on traps, but I don't think that would be quite enough to push this back. So. Oh, 
There's something making matters worse there for Tato. Woo woo yeah. woo. <laughs> oh man. Guy always against uh, the guy losing. That's just how it works. Is that how it works? That's how it works. In Interesting. My experience, I'm always losing, always against Gaia. <laughs> you can get out of here with the always <laughs> losing, bro. <laughs> just get out of here. Oh man. Well, I mean, organ it's guns obviously. Man. Organs obviously help a lot against skirms and crossbows. And I'm just not seeing how Tato can turn this around right now. He's got to find damage somewhere. Yeah. He's going to be later to imp. The thing is, what he needs to do is to start expanding backwards. So he has a slight villager lead, which is not that bad. It's uh, good. But it's, he's going to have a hard time holding that early imp by Jordan. But if he manages to do so by uh, using the skirmishers and then switches into Hazard early enough, I think he can abuse the sides because remember, Jordan's focusing on the middle, mm -hmm. which means that sides are opened up for damage. So Tato just needs to stabilize, make the game messy while developing economy. And then eventually, he really if he gets to the Tatar late game, he definitely has the better save there, right? But yep. for now, it's all Jordan. Yeah, and Jordan, Jordan is... He's got to avoid being too distracted by some of these armies from Tata. But Tata's doing a good job here. He killed Villager on the right, which we saw a glimpse of. There, I know he loses the Manganel, but he's pressuring. Here, he's sneaking an army. If Jordan comes backwards, if Jordan reacts too heavily, then, you know, maybe it t buys Tata a little bit more time. And we see this stone mining upgrade now. I really am curious on where Tata's going to build his castle. This is actually, I know it seems bad heart, but I actually think it's good for a player when they see their opponent hits him before they place the castle, right? Because too many people are going to misjudge the situation. So you'll see him, and then uh, pretty much right after he's going to place this castle, I imagine. It's got to be further back or way to the side. I think it has to be, like, yeah, exactly, like so far back. Like, you pretty much accept that you will give up your whole front of your base. You will keep uh, developing towards the back, and you give up the front. Uh, and then. Sure, he's going to take out some farms, some houses, some buildings, but then eventually he's going to have to start attacking you uphill, and that's where you hold. And during all the time you were developing economy, trying to get to your late game. So, if you see that many skirmishers, do you consider Cavalier right now? If you're Jordan, or are you just so far ahead, you feel you can just force the issue with cannons? I, I think initially you have to rely on just Bombard Cannons. I think Cavalier would be too expensive of an upgrade. Uh, so yeah, I think Bombard Cannons will do it just fine. This is crazy. Four relics for Jordan. There's a fifth relic, which is on the right side, which I think he, he yeah, he's, he's not going to get right now. But I mean, four of the five relics is already ridiculous. He's got 101 villagers. Uh, he does get hit by that shot, but does end up killing that Manganel anyways. And it feels like it's going to be really difficult for Tato here, but he will choose to defend with skirmishers first and foremost. So like we said, Maybe organ guns, but also bomb mark cannons can be mixed in to help with the skirms. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. Jordan has a bit of a slip up. Notice how Tato's getting the armor upgrade first before Bracer, because you, uh, what do you care more about? Plus one range or not dying at all to the Expos, right? Yep. So that's, I really like that choice by Tato, uh, because otherwise he, he could get overrun by the Expos. And Right now, he's just trying to be annoying. He's trying to split his army, make it as hard as possible for Jordan to just focus on one side. He's still though, he's super behind and not in a good position, but I think he's taking the, he's doing the right moves to come back. I'm a little surprised Jordan hasn't clicked Arbales, but sometimes it, you, you think you have it on the way and then you realize later. I think players typically want to max out though on the unit they've committed to before switching into the night line. Yeah. Uh, we are seeing, I mean, Imp Armor on the way, Cavalier could be clicked, so he's really aware that Tato's going to stick on Skirms, and even just Castle Age Knights will be fine. Yeah. And uh, it's just so tricky for Tato, but I mean, maybe there, like maybe those villagers, if Tato can hold, those villagers on the left could start to raid a little bit, uh, or, or make something that can raid. I don't think the villagers are going to be doing it, but... Yeah, the, the, the thing here is that Jordan was very smart. He noticed that the only thing Tato could make to hold was skirmishers. So instead of committing into Arbalest, he just made Bracer and Chemistry and didn't do Arbalest. Yeah. He just switched into, saved all those, all those resources and spent them on Cavalier. Because you actually don't need that many out on the field, right? You just need like five or six to make sure that the skirmishers are not being annoying everywhere. Uh, and that's going to be enough to gain you time and eventually get you to a superior army composition. Uh, with Por Portuguese, still playing with the timings, with the momentums, uh, if they get to Arbalest plus Cavalier, that's still super deadly. I would really like to see Tato try Cav Archer here. I get that Keshek's strong, 
but you have to expect your castles are going to get pushed at some point. And you already have the ranged upgrades, right? You have the armor and you have the attack. And that would apply to your cav archers as well as, of course, the skirm. So, you know, I think cav archers kind of like your best unit. Um, it might be really tough for Tato to have the time and the resources to go fully for Elite Keshik. But maybe he's already done the math on it. And he feels like there's no possible way that cav archer is going to do it for him. And he has a lot of belief in Keshik, which I would say is in some ways an underrated unique unit right now. Would you agree? Not in my eyes. To me, <laughs> to me Keshik's are like the make Keshik win game kind of unit. Okay, okay. Honestly. I don't think most people think that, though. So. I, I see them, like, in my tier list of uh, castle units, there's, in no particular order, Mangudai, Camel Archers, Keshik's. Really? Way. Okay. Yeah. All right, what about Manaspa right now? Because that's kind of... Oh. That oh yeah, Monaspa better than all of them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, Monaspa's like, it's like doesn't too, yeah. doesn't count. Like we're waiting for the nerf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Monaspas are insane. Okay. But Keshik, if you get, the, I, I I like the way Tato is thinking of this. He's thinking, if I just get one good clear up, I win the game. Okay. So he's gonna gain as much time as possible while massing Keshik, take one fight, and if he wins that fight, I think the game is turned around. Honestly. Jordan needs Arbalest, right? Jordan you've got you've got thirty units that you've invested other upgrades into, but you really need to get Arbalest, I think, to be able to get the best of defending this. But he does take the hill uh, away from him because he takes out that castle, and that's an important building for Tato to make those Keshiks. Tato's uh, doing upgrades from two blacksmiths, and Jordan's going in for the fight. Is this a good fight, though? I don't think so. I, I think the Keshiks are, are just going to smash this. Yeah, I mean, the, the Keshiks have some pretty ridiculous stats, right? And the Skirms get pulled over. They're going to go in for the crossbows. Remember, Jordan's got all the relics. Jordan's got amazing defensive castle setups. He can afford to take a bad fight, but that was not the prettiest engagement for Jordan there, considering he has the lead. Yeah, I mean, it was still a no Actually, fight. actually, yeah, the pop's actually incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how, how the, the hills were. I think Jordan had the hill uh, for many of his units there, which is what ended up designing, but because I really thought that that would be just a cleanup. For yeah, I think you might need to rethink your tier list of unique units there, no, my no, friend. No, 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 I, I think Jordan had the hill. <laughs> GG, <laughs> GG's uh, called, and honestly, it's it's kind of funny, right? Because the Tatars have the hill bonus, but for Tato in that game, that was just an uphill battle. It felt like the entire time. Jordan, I, the key moment of the game for me, obviously, he had to execute beautifully afterwards, but it was the tower moment. He towered. Yeah. It was tower, damage control, counterattack, and then he was able to find some good engagements, and Tatars, another loss. I would love for stat guy uh, and production to tell me what the win rate is for Tatars. Because I, um, I I personally feel as though they're, on paper, a really well-balanced civilization, but they're always losing. I feel like they're a well-balanced civilization amongst slightly OP civilizations yes. right now. And they just haven't been able to get the job done so far in NAC5. Yeah, exactly. It, there are some saves that right now, they just have so many strong uh, individual bonuses that they pull you ahead by default, right? The Tars don't really have that. They just have like sheep at the beginning that is not really like anything to talk about. Uh, and, and then they get tumbering, but that's also like not something that will win you a game on its own. So compared to Portuguese, for example, that just let you spam so many units that get you ahead in feudalage, or let's say uh, Saracens with the super camels, Byzantine with cheap units. Like all, all these saves, they, they just have something that they excel at a lot. While Tatars don't. Tatar, Tatars are just well balanced. Right? Okay, so in some ways, though, would you say based on the draft that Tato still understands I've got better civilizations to come, and that was a higher pick for Jordan, this is fine? Mm -hmm. um, it's also kind of like... I wouldn't have necessarily assumed that uh, Jordan was going to pick Portuguese on Arabia, so it does look like the best uh, Portuguese map out of the five. Uh, but yeah, I think that Ars is down on his on his uh, picks. Okay. So it's not that important, but obviously it's the best of five, so you don't really have much room uh, to give games, right? Um, Where do you see Hindustani slotting in here for Jordan? Hindustanis, I, I think Hindustanis should be for Outcrop, right? Outcrop or Acropolis? Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't mind them for Acropolis, actually, because I feel like most of those games, whoever dominates is making stable units. Um, the exception has been, like, Mezzo, uh, like, like Incas, like Aztecs or whatever, but we don't have them drafted at all. So I guess we'll see, but it's Tato's choice here on what we play, so maybe it'll be Outcrop, outcrop or uh, Desert Void. 
So that's like an interaction that we haven't seen too much yet uh, in this tournament, I feel, is that we see so many camel saves, but the natural counter to camel saves that we are not seeing too often yet is meso. Like, it's like we're not seeing enough meso for how much camel we're seeing, yeah. right? So I feel like may maybe uh, uh, when the next rounds begin, people are, are going to start to pick up on that and abuse more the Aztec, the Incas, the Mayans, because they really do well against uh, the Camels. I think a big part of that is there's three civilizations that can make eagles, and then there's, what, 12 random bands, mm -hmm. combined with then the bands the players do. So we had Aztecs on the random band before any of the drafting started, and, and then Jordan said, <laughs> just get rid of the other two, right? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of fear that those civilizations can dominate, so... We might not see them quite as much, but I think Incas have had a really good win rate. You won a game earlier with Incas. Yeah. Um, I, I can recall Jordan winning a game against Leary with Incas. Man, Leary must hate the Incas, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just losing to them left and right. Yeah, it was so it was interesting, guys. So before this series, uh, myself. Uh, Hart, Leary, and others were sitting in the in the room where we just chill and watch the games. And you needed uh, Andy to win? Yeah, I needed Andy to win. Okay, so you needed Andy to win to, to have a chance to stay alive, and then Leary needed Yo to win. So it was like this, it wasn't too intense, it wasn't as intense as I'd love to clickbait for you guys, but it was like a little bit of back and forth, and like, Leary's like, what is Yo doing, you know? And Hart is like, let's go Andy! Go Andy. <laughs> the goat! Uh, <laughs> Uh, and again, we see some of the details here. I think like the big thing here is look at previous NAC finishes. Tato is like one of the best players. So consistent. Yeah, one of the best players. I mean, we're talking years back too. Like I think the first NAC was 2018, mm -hmm. 2019. That was obviously pre-definitive edition. Um, and I mean, Tato, I, I think somehow got better this year. Like he is somehow playing better than he was the year or two before and he was already in many people's top five. He's playing so good here. The way I see Tato is like he was already good and it seems like every tournament, in no matter team game or 1v1, every single tournament he's stepping up just a little bit more. Yeah. He's making baby steps and he's con constantly making progress and honestly like r right now he's a beast. I, I, I think you, you could definitely make the argument for top three. Yeah, right now. Yeah, I, I totally get that. He had to qualify, of course. Uh, he did fight hard in the qualifiers. I think it ended up going to the seventh game against Barles. Shout out to Barles if he's out there watching. But here we are, game number two. And in the first game, Tato went down. And we talked about the Civs a little bit. We felt like even the map uh, was favored for Jordan. So here we've got Gurjaras for Tato, a great counter civilization. Uh, Civ that plays through their stable a lot with the Shravamsha Rider or the Camel. And then we have Jordan with the Magyars. And Magyars are known for doing a lot of damage early with their Scout Rush. But uh, this map's a bit different. You've got three Elephants. Yeah. And then it's pretty easy for players to wall up. What does become complicated, though, is taking the Golds and the Stones later on. Yeah, the Golds are exposed, the Stones are exposed. There's also Tents that count, count as a house that are also exposed. And Magyars usually can't get map control because they have cheaper and better scouts, and also their spears have plus one attack, which makes a huge difference in these uh, mostly scout-oriented games, right? So Gurjaras does have the few LH camel, but once you get uh, three scouts together, or there's a spear in the mix, uh, that's not as dangerous as it would be in a 1v1 against a regular scout, right? So Magyars is definitely favorite here in uh, the early few LH, or, or mid, honestly, through the whole few LH. Uh, and then in Castellage, it becomes interesting because Gurjaras get really strong camels, but Magyars, they get CA. And while camels can deal a lot of damage to CA, uh, you don't, like, you might not get to hit them, right? If you micro properly, if mm -hmm. you can run, also you can add pikes, or if you decide to, st to stay on, uh, on cavalry units, you can just play Lycaf Monk, for example, or, or Lycaf and then eventually pikes. I think that's uh, also something very viable here. Since the goals are exposed and you cannot really get to them easily, you usually see a lot of like play on this map. Okay, yeah, that could be fun. So um, another thing that could be a struggle if you do not get gold is Gurjaras don't get pikemen. True. So I don't know if you're really going to fall into that. Like, I feel like you're going to need camels, right? But it is worth noting. Also, fun fact, I don't know if you know this. Did you know that you get more population space from the huts that are bigger than the small one? There are bigger and smaller ones? Yeah, there's, there, like, that's an army tent, and there's a smaller one. Here, Vod, could we... No, there's a small... Yeah, that one. Did you know that gives less population space? Because you can fit less people? No, what the hell? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I even trusting this guy? <laughs> 
He was looking at the screen. Of, Whoa! What big <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this game is not realistic, people. Uh, it's it's all the same. <laughs> oh man! But I, okay. So, strategy scheming a little bit. Obviously, they're going to build up here most likely towards scouts. Because you get those, you don't need to build houses. Mm -hmm. I feel like a, a strategy that could be saved is like a early drush type play. Like okay. where you, you take straggler trees for a little bit with like Persians, okay. Lithuanians maybe, right? Because you don't need the houses at all. Yeah, yeah. I haven't tested it myself, so I don't know how that would flow, but... No, no, no. Uh, it, it makes sense, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense why you're a caster and not a player. Wow, come on, <laughs> ah, bro! Sorry, I had to, get you, had to get you back, man, come on. I actually... <laughs> you just wait, though. No, you that, just wait. Like, yeah, semi-finals? No, 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 that's bad, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just wait. Semi-finals, we're going to see it. I feel like, actually, Doubt would be the guy... He's looking at me right now. Doubt would be the guy that would maybe do that. Um, the guy to grieve with militia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, man. Right? Well, okay, okay. Sounds, sounds Hold like on. <laughs> Since you're going to talk shit, all right, listen, hear me out. So, like, let's say you don't end up doing a lot. Like, you, you do some damage, you force reactions. Just take out their huts, then. The huts are low HP. You they, could just house them. Yeah, but then you just rebuild the house. Yeah, but then you're investing resources. The militia pay off more than it would on, like, Arabia, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still makes sense. Still makes sense. There's, there's some <laughs> level of logic, but I think you're saying it. You know, it it might be yeah, not worth the investment. I don't think it will get enough value to to like throw away your early resources. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, we have that camel scout, the starting camel scout there with Tato. That guy will beast against the scouts from Jordan. So Tato's got to be, or Jordan's got to be careful. Uh, walls are coming up, but I'm looking to see. It doesn't look like there's any golds within the walls from Tato, which. Is to be expected on this map, right? Because yeah. the gold is really awkward. So I think for now, Tato's hoping to protect himself. I mean, his golds are really bad, actually. Usually you have one to the side that, like, yeah. not necessarily inside the wood lines, but just slightly outside. Yeah. Tato's goals are terrible here, man. They're, they're, they're all so far out. And that makes me wonder, like, what is he going to do about that? Uh, because if he just makes spearmen, then he risks... Uh, a switch for, uh, of archers from Jordan, right? And then he's mm -hmm. getting pushed off the gold. So maybe he will just make a, a market, sell his stone uh, to go up, and then just go f pure like us. Okay, so remember that time where you said like the militia would get like zero value? Yeah. These, scout, these scouts have got no value whatsoever. Maybe you could take out a hut. <laughs> I mean, the scout can take out the hut as well, right? But, <laughs> but the scouts get upgraded to like... Hey, hey here we go, baby. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. It's actually good. The militia will be dead by now. <laughs> That's true. That's a fair point. And the scouts have a lot more utility. But Tato actually, as they're oh, both attacking revenge. each other's huts... <laughs> you do it to me, I do it to you. <laughs> um, I mean, both players are actually about to get housed at 40, which is kind of interesting. And look at Jordan. This is something that Tato did the other day. He's bringing a villager forward. And he sees how bad those golds are, and he wants to take advantage of it while walling in that wow. gold. That's interesting. Did the other hut go down? Oh, it's super close. Tato slightly housed. Great. Super housed now. We are talking about huts and houses. That's pretty much it right now. Are you thrilled to be casting this? Of course. I love me some huts. <laughs> Especially if, it, if it's a pizza hut. <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored, Not by the sponsor. way. But hey, uh, send Nilly a message. I'm sure maybe we could figure something out. Or send me one. I will also take <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, hard as well. Hard as well. Fair. <laughs> Nilly doesn't want, then I take it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's a tent. And we'll see if that goes down. Tato is housed at the moment. But lots of spearmen. I mean, I think it's a big deal that you don't get pike long term. Like, if anything, you're going to want to take trades with these spears Thank before you. Castle Age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the question is also, what do you switch into? Like, if you lose this uh, Spearman battle, what do you do after? Do you just look good to camels when the enemy is already on so many pikes, for example? Mm, I, get awkward. I think Magyar transition into Cav Archer is really, feels really good here. Because, like, you might have some leftover Spearman, so, like, Pikeman Cav Archer against Gurjara Camel could be nice. You yeah. do have a mobility issue, though, with the, with the Spearman. So we'll see Tato research forging and also now armor here for his spears. And he continues to turn around every time Jordan shows up. And there's a lot of pointy boys on the field right now. Yeah, I guess Tato just wants to take any fight that is not... Like, any even fight for him is a good fight in some way. Just because he doesn't get to upkeep them later, right? Yep, yep, yep. I don't know if this is the most even yeah, of fights, though. This one doesn't look too good. Yeah. Well, Jordan's walling up the gold. 
Hmm. What do you think about Saracens on this map? Because you can just play without the gold for for a bit more time with the market. Yeah, yeah, Saracen also interesting, but they could run into the similar issue as Kurjaras right now, right? Where, Where they're uh, stuck on camel, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's no gold, so naturally you could be on pikes. Kind of what happens in uh, uh, Langanati, for example, where camel sips are really strong, yeah, but the the pike switch is also very good against them, right? Because you usually struggle on gold. On I really, at some point. I really like how confident Jordan has played. He hasn't taken, well, no, excuse me, he did lose a villager a moment ago, uh, but that was the villager that came forward. That's to be expected, possibly. But he's played with the, just enough army, it feels like. He's he's played rather open at home, happy to play uh, with, with his base being open, which is normally not what you do. Like, if your opponent is going to wall up, normally you do the same right away. But his eco has possibly been a little bit more efficient because of this heart. And also he saved some food because his scouts are cheaper. He's taking a good trade here as well. And this is like the Jordan we saw the first three days, right? Day four, he played like the very last set. There was some question on was he really clicking like energy-wise. And obviously he was against Hera too, who's, who's phenomenal. But this is, I'm loving this play Very from Jordan. Good. He even did wheelbarrow. He's just missing some gold to click up. Um, I wonder if he's, if he has a market coming up somewhere because Otherwise, his castle age time is going to be delayed a lot just because of the lack of gold, which wouldn't be ideal for him. This this map feels like someone took like a normal map and said, hey, how can we make this more annoying? <laughs> push, <laughs> We're the, gonna... push the gold out, delete all the wood. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we make the wood less sparse. We put markets in the corner, cracked terrain. So if you build anything, it takes a lot more damage. Like This is really difficult to play. There's an early archer here from Jordan. And it almost went down there, but that plays a role in him being a little bit late to having the gold. Ooh, that, that was a good play by Tato. He almost sniped the archer, but then sent the camel around oh, to snipe it. Wow. And also took two scouts on the wall. I would love to that see a nice. replay there from Tato's point of view. Yeah, that, that was really good. I like the tower here from Tato too. Like, no messing around. Get the tower up. Protect it. Yeah, he needs that. Yeah. And, uh, well... Uptimes are pretty much the same. KD is super even. Res collected is also insanely even. Crazy, crazy. This is, I think the whole series is going to be like this. Like this Right now, I really like the Magyar Cav Archer switch with some pikes. Um, but like, let's say Tato evens it up here. I think we go all the way to five games. Lots of technical Arabia-style play. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, this, this like Jordan's, like Tato's a beast, but Jordan's playing so well lately, so yep. why not? And, and I think he's done a great job so far. Um, the positions are quite even, though. Jo uh, Tato seems to be switching into skirmishers, obviously anticipating a, a CA switch. Yep, yep, that's a really good call, actually. I actually would love to see Tato's Fog of War just to see, did he see double range? Because I think there was a second one on the front. He actually just saw the archer, because I think he just encountered the range. But there's even a third range going up behind for Jordan. Third range for Magyars. Remember, Magyars produce CA faster. Three range can almost be overkill. They produce so fast and yeah. they're kind of expensive on gold. Especially if you have only eight on gold, he might be able to do maybe two CA uh, from the third range. But then he's going to be out of gold. Mm -hmm. So I think Jordan might not be too happy with the fact he also doesn't have spe as many spears. Yeah. The skirmisher edition here was really nice because now camels can be created. And if camels are getting hits against your cav archers, it could be really annoying for you. Yeah, the, the skirmish have been a great addition here by Tato. It's giving him map control and it's also giving him a, a good transition. What I don't like that I'm seeing is uh, she in the way. I hate that unit. It's so bad. Wait, you think the unit's not good, or you think the way the unit works because it dodges when it's clearly not even dodging is a problem? I think it's a bad unit. Like I think it got, <laughs> it got nerfed. Okay. It got nerfed in so many different ways that now, now it's just like ineffective. Okay. Especially when both players are walled, right? Maybe, I, maybe if you have a good big economy and the enemy is open and you can raid, sure. But when there's going to be fighting, I think Shivamshas are just... Uh, they struggle. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, for me, the Shivamsha... I, I agree with you, actually. I think what the biggest use of the Shivamsha is a raiding unit these days. But the quote-unquote dodge that it has, it it, uh, it disappears so quickly against mass range units. And then, and you know, once squishy. that's gone, it, it, they're, they're very squishy, yes. They just, they just melt. And, um, you know, for me... It doesn't seem like Tato's going to commit too heavily to them, but he is queuing a second one right now. He's still just kind of look for damage as Jordan dropped the TC. Tato no TC yet. Uh, he hasn't mined any stone to do that. 
And Tetsu's going to grab that relic. It looks like, like there's a lot of Golden Stone right there between the players. I think this is going to be a big old battle in the middle here. Yeah. And CA are not really the best unit to, to fight with in such uh, tight places, right? When there's Siege involved, there's Scorpions, Mangonels, some Camels that don't let you walk freely. It can become really awkward for him also. Uh, crack to range, right? So if Tato manages to get some uh, nice amount of Siege out, he could start pushing those buildings in the front. Right? That's fair. Sure. Yeah. I really like as well, Tato's got quite a few Scorpions. I think if, if you go for Manganel, it's easier for players to micro it down these days. But the Scorpion does a lot of pass-through damage, which adds up over time. So I think Jordan might need his own Siege Workshop right now, honestly. Like yeah. a bit of his own Siege with his Cav Archers would look really good. Yeah, yeah. The, the issue with uh, with him doing Mangonels here is that one thing that Sri Ramshas could be good at is at running in to snipe the Siege and dying. Ah. But they would get the Siege. So. Okay, okay. So so you you think it's still a good play, but it's it's a bit trickier. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think he still has to because that's his uh, the, the most logical choice to deal with the Siege from Tato. But I can also see it uh, backfiring a little bit. Okay. I really Tato doesn't have the most upgrades on his uh, cavalry yet, right? So m perhaps they could die before even managing to managing to kill the siege. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I think a big issue for Jordan right now is his gold is actually rangeable by the siege. He didn't drop a town center that protected that gold. Sure. Not to mention that's really not that much gold in the first place. It's almost out soon. Yeah. That's why we see so much like up on this map, like a fight because uh, you just run out of gold really fast. And look at Tato. Uh, he was mining some stone on the very left of his base. But, oh, wow, great reaction time from Tato. It's so easy to not expect that shot and not see it and, and lose your Manganel. And you know who would be aim grounding the Siege Workshop just before the Manganel comes out? MBL. MBL. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, MBL. <laughs> look, look at that. How was that a dodge? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, they take no damage from the first shot from Manganel as well because of the dodge. Yeah, yeah, I think I think such, you made me remember <laughs> about the whole situation. <laughs> oh man! Don't bring it back up. Now people are gonna look for the clip if they didn't see it. <laughs> what are you doing? Bro? Uh, don't look, chat. If you if you haven't seen the king clip, don't don't. don't look <laughs> yes, because people people in Twitch chat definitely listen to the streamer when the streamer says don't do this. Yeah. Guys, definitely do not subscribe to Nilly's channel to support NAC5 right now, okay? Yeah, don't That'd be a price. horrible decision. Don't horrible decision price. to support the efforts. We, we really, Nilly doesn't want or deserve the support. Just don't do it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful snipe there from the Manganel, uh, or of the Manganel. And you said that Shravamsh is really good at that, yeah. and Jordan has limited gold, so he can't actually make another Manganel easily right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the gold is really lacking. Uh, I feel like it's just really hard to be in Jordan's position, right? I mean, he, he just needs to... If he takes out one mango, then he's fine. Like, I swear, the Shiranshas are still fake. <laughs> they're only good at killing the, the, the siege. But at, at everything else, they're fake. They're a fake unit. <laughs> they're a fake unit. They're not real. They're it's not a conspiracy. Real. It's all, it's all in, in your opponent's uh, head. Trust. Yeah. Well, I mean, if Pikeman's there... If you have Pikemen that can take care of the Shravamsha, the Cav Archer Mass is still decent, so... I like what Tato's doing, he's, he's gonna poke and prod that area. He's and been annoying, right? Hitting everywhere, trying to get Jordan to react, yeah. not letting him move out. Jordan down to only one on gold, so... Hmm, yeah, so... You know the other thing about the Shravamsha is they don't cost a lot of gold. I think it's like 70 food, 30 gold? I could be way off on that. Probably like 40 gold, I think they got nerfed. Okay, yeah, well... Either way, that is less gold than some of the other units that you could make. So that Tato's only had six on gold this whole time, and just one relic. So yeah, I mean at this point, I, I think Jordan needs to make a move for a town center with another gold to the left. Take a risk, maybe just yeah. move out. Yeah, yeah, because th this town center is not looking hot, and I don't think he can take this fight. I mean, maybe L let's see. I guess it does depend on the conversions. There's there's not much beyond the scorpions and the Manganel here for Tato. He does convert two pikes. Jordan looking to take the fight. This is the biggest fight of the game. Big build up. If you win this series, you go directly to the semifinals. This is massive for both players who know each other so well. And the fake unit, the Shravamsha, <laughs> is in combination with the Siege, but the Siege has done more than anything right now. And the, and the pikes are fake. Look at them. They did nothing. They just died. <laughs> still Shravamsha's out there. Jordan still trying to dodge shots, but he's losing HP, and it looks like Tato's going to hold his position here. 
look at that army as well. There's there's like eight different types of units for for Tato. Here. Tato's a, Tato's an AI, bro. Uh, AI <laughs> army. <laughs> and Jordan. Oh, he's going to make a move for the gold, but Tato's thinking he has to do that soon. And Tato, with control, is going to find a raid that could end Perfect. Jordan here. That Kappa, one, two, three. Okay, okay, never mind. Just passing no, no, people. No, no, we're teammates, we're teammates. Just bye, passing. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of respect there amongst friends. Uh, I think the Cap Archers and the Pike should be able to clear this up, though. Yeah, yeah. Still good raid from Tato. He just got the final attack upgrade, and he's going to kill more villagers than I expected because it's still hard to judge this unit. And it delays the TC, and now that's another target for Tato to think about. That's another gold that isn't even really protected by the TC there, Hart. It's I mean, like, it's still rangeable. Yeah. How many Vils died there? Like, I swear, that, that, that unit eight. is fake. The eight. eight. And died. also, the most annoying thing is one unit got through, and that unit is going to kill, like, five villagers before Har Jordan's able to deal with it. Uh, uh, uh. It's so fast, man. They, they're so, they, they it's are so fast. speedy. Oh, man. I remember when they were broken, the most annoying unit in the game. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I kind of hate how bad they are now, but I also I'm glad that they're. You're not glad that they're. <laughs> I mean, they've done a pretty good job so, yeah, so far. So far, they've done a quite quite a decent job. Yep. I thought Cav Archers would dominate here, and good Manganel micro from both. Uh, let's see though, another good shot. That's Jordan's time though. Jordan uh, with a better army now, and suddenly, Jordan might push this back. Suddenly, the fakeness is coming in real, <laughs> <laughs> and and Tato has like no units because, like. What do you do here, right? I mean, he's raiding, I guess. Jordan needs to housewall that. If yeah, those Shravamshas get through... If they, if they get through! Come on, woman! Oh, ah. that's so annoying, man. Good luck dealing with that. I, I guess the other one eventually died. But yeah, what a game. It's 105 pop versus 108. I, I think both players have been building up towards a castle as well. Tato's going to shift, I think, to Elite Skirm there. Yeah, the Elite Skirm click makes a lot of sense. Clearly, he feels as though he needs something more against this Pikeman and uh, Cav Archer play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, skirm I, I, I was kind of surprised that he didn't do skirmishers right off the bat. Uh, I, I think skir like opening elite skirmisher in Castle Age and just a few camel would have forced uh, Jordan off the gold or into siege and stuff like that. Oh man. Okay, fake units are going in for the engagement. The fake units are doing a pretty good job, uh -huh. and most of the cab archers disappear and the siege disappears. Yeah, very good fight there for Tato. But, uh, do don't give the credit to the fake unit. They, that was the, the four cameras that were in. <laughs> well, they're the shields. Like, they soak the damage, true, true. and then the camels, you know, so that there's some, you know, there's something there, right? The mix. Yeah. It's the mix. But the bigger sense. issue to me is Jordan has 27 pikes, and the pikes couldn't get anywhere close there. Like, Jordan, I think, was trying to gather his himself there, and he must have had so many different units spread throughout his base because of those raids. Yeah. Uh, that was definitely a fight that Jordan, if he loses this game, will look back to as, as possibly the game changer. Do Magyar, do Magyars get squires? I'm going to guess yes, because most civs get squires. But it actually... Ooh. Why are you making me look like an idiot? I do that. I do. I look like an idiot I'm just, enough. I'm just proving it to the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I actually... I, 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 I'm going to... Maybe they don't. Big moment in our game. We're going to have a castle from, from Tato. Also, since the Gurjara... Uh, stable units do additional bonus damage. Uh, the mounted units do additional bonus damage. That also applies to the elephants oh, here. Oh, and this so they wreck, they them. wreck TCs, dude. Crack terrain, bonus damage, elephantoram. Like it's crazy. It's all coming together, man. Yeah, but still, there's a lot of pikemen. There's a lot of cav archers. Tato, if he doesn't take out this TC, he might not be happy with how this goes because I think Jordan's fight is pretty solid here. This is a great fight for Jordan. Like. Uh, He's losing some villagers, which I think is the part that hurts the most. Yeah, 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 true. He's cleaning up. Well, then again, he's losing more than some. That fight is actually not so good. The elephant's still working. And Jordan lost 10 villagers. He lost all the villagers that were under the TC, and the TC goes down. Yeah, so uh, the, the score comes closer, but the villager count plummeted, plummeted for Jordan. Oh, God. Oh, wow. God. But there's no oh. army now. But now Tato's making a Sebastian castle. <laughs> And we see it happening all over again. I mean, if Jordan manages to get back the Villiers here, then he's in a fine spot because now he, he just has a better army composition. Yeah, and, and Jordan realizes that Tato's going to go primarily Skirmisher, which will work against his units. So he's going to switch into some Knights. He's going to like have upgrade to spam that. And again, I'll say, what a close game. Uh, a Doubt Castle, as many people call it, but Sebastian will throw in there as well because of his... Uh, we have to mix it in. <laughs> his Qualifier <laughs> Castle. <laughs> um, great job from Tato there to still raid. He's killed 27 villagers, but he has to finish this castle. So much of his eco is idle right there. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is still a huge loss for that. Huh? And but he has the skirmishers out now. That yeah. should be enough to repel. And well, I mean, he's doing a great job with uh, Shiram just to be honest. Like, look at that. He's raiding different sides. He's staying really active. That, that, that's crazy management. Yeah, this by, is Tattoo's yeah. point of view. Uh, he's playing as blue on his screen, but let's just look at his micro. He's microing there. He's microing there. He's microing there as well. And then he's still creating villagers out of all of his TCs right now. What and gamer. thinking about that next castle. And there, that's where the next castle is going to be. You can see he has the Doubt Castle mod on as well, actually. So that's probably <laughs> why his castle failed before. We'll see if it goes up this time. But there's there's a TC there now, so Tato can't complete That's that. Awkward. If Tato doesn't realize, he could lose quite a few villagers there. And there he goes. He's going to back the castle up. He's going to be happy with that anyway because he denies the gold. Does Jordan? I think Jordan still has one gold to the right, right? Yeah. Uh, so... Mm, that's like enough to get you to imp, maybe, but not really enough to win you the game. So Jordan's definitely feeling the pressure here. That castle going up is going to be deadly. He probably needs to uh, change his approach now. I think he needs to start attacking. Somehow. Yeah, I think he needs to raid right yeah. now. Like, like the light cav addition was there for the skirms, but you could in theory just defend with some siege and pike and then send the light cav forward. Tato has 122 villagers. He's got a 30 villager lead, and he's collected so much more in the way of resources. Not necessarily gold. I'm guessing that that would be pretty close, but he's got control of Jordan's gold now, and that army mass of skirms specifically is just huge. Yeah, and it looks like everything's coming together for Tato now. Taking huge control of the map. He's finally on the perfect units he needs. Uh, okay, I would love to see some energy here from Jordan we rarely see from him. He's not a big forward castle guy. Especially when there's a castle at his base. Like, that's not a feeling that I think he's used to. But with that stone count, I think if you go to a round where you walled in that gold before, like you castle that on right there. Right there. You castle it right there, and then you can take both those golds and continue to pressure Tato. Exactly. Gives you two golds, takes on a down center. Tato is on the way up, though. And like, Gurjara's pop off so hard to him. But once you get the upgrade to make your units 25% uh, cheaper in food, uh, they just start producing like crazy. He did get it, by the way, Shatras. Oh, he did get it. Yeah, so it's a Castle Age tech. Um, so we'll have that with potential imp upgrades. But that is a lot of Cav Archers. And Tato, he, he can't really address this right now. And if Skirms show up, Jordan's got Light Cav now. And I'm just wondering, where are the villagers from Jordan? Is he going to bring any? Maybe feels like he can't right now because Tato could cut him off. But long term, Jordan, as you said, will absolutely need gold. He's even been spotted right there. Yeah. That's moving over the skirmishers. They're super far away still, though. But There's an overchop. Oh, it's open. It's overchopped. Oh, man. The camels are going to feast here. No ballistics for Tato. He's missing a lot of shots. That could be a big deal. Jordan has ballistics. Jordan is getting thumb ring. Jordan is into the eco. Villagers are dropping here for Tato. Tato's now lost 20 villagers. Resources are still looking good for Tato, but he needs to find an answer to this right now. Yeah, yeah, he needs his army back home. I think he's struggling uh, to get his units across. Or <laughs> or maybe even underestimate... No, okay, he's sending everything back right now. I mean, he knows, right? He's all yep. the way to him. He has control of the map, so he probably assumes that Jordan cannot be up. So he just needs to deal with this, and then he's fine. But yeah. the skirmishers are once again going the wrong way. Well, and, I think I think he's torn because like he doesn't want his skirms to be too exposed right now the because they could cap. be caught out against the light cap, yeah. yeah. But I mean that's that's not a good sign for Tato to have those villagers there. And there Tato sees the light cap will bring his camels in front. 180 pop though for Tato, who's found Jordan there. He tracks Jordan nicely. It feels like Tato's got gonna have more gold income, and now he's in the Imperial Age. Jordan still hasn't clicked, so Jordan needs a big fight soon. Yeah, I could see Jordan calling the GG soon. Um, he's gonna feel overwhelmed here. Oh man, especially after losing so many Cav Archers like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, th this is an army composition you can no longer deal with, it, I think. Uh, you, you need to be on three units, right? CA, Pikes, Hazar, yep. or Laika. Yep. That's a bit too much. I mean, technically, you, you could just be on, like, screw the CA and go full Pike and... Uh, pike like uh, Yeah, Pike like have, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. But the fact you're down an age kind of hurts. Yeah. And then your opponent is spending less food to create their units. So, it, and, and all of the units that Tato is producing cost food here. But Tato, no Bracer yet, no chemistry. So the Skirms are still Castle Age. Still seems like it's good enough. And Tato getting Ballistics, which he's been missing for a long time here. Still a 20 population lead. Tato hoping to tie up the series. Jordan's still fighting on here, Hart. 
Yeah, I like that. The fighter spirit, man. I love to see that from Jordan. Yeah, if my pop's not going down below like 130, I'm probably still playing on an age down. That's fair, that's fair. Uh, and I mean, he still believes, right? Like, if, if he somehow manages to hold for another four minutes, get to Imp and upgrade these guys to, yep. to fully upgraded Magyar CA. They're the, the Giga Chat unit of the of them. And look at the right? expansion from Jordan as well. He's expanding to the south, right? So right. he's he's found a lot of different areas, and if he can stay on that for long enough, while also raiding, he's absolutely got a chance here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's doing everything he possibly can to to stay in this game. I, I love it. Yeah. Problem here is Tato's going to drop another castle, and Tato's still so far from really being in a strong imp position upgrade wise, right? So it's going to get worse for Jordan. That's a good fight for Jordan actually, because he's fighting against full pike. But the castle will go up for Tato, who's now getting bracer. Still a really bad fight for Tato's camels. But I think it says something if you can take a fight like that and you're still winning the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this is the point where you realize you've lost too much map control. And it's not gonna get any better. Like, yep. He will need to cancel every everything in production to try to go up uh, to ever have a chance to coming back. <laughs> That's a multitasking there from Jordan. Uh, RNG man, RNG. No, no way you can notice. No, you don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh I man. Never, never give credit to the players. <laughs> it's always luck. Did you RNG. did you happen to catch the uh, moment where uh, Hera unpacked his trebs because there was a treb shot coming in towards his trebs, and I was like, that was 100% just him clicking on a building. And Dave was like, no, he tried it. Did you catch that at all? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. So I was thinking about that a little bit more. Hera was walking right by us uh, during a break when Dave and I were arguing about it. Do you think Hera was being truthful there, or do you think he tried it? I'm not sure. I had done some. <laughs> I had done something similar to that years ago. Okay. And and, and it was so, such a highlight for me because I still remember. It was a random ass game. Um, I, I, it was Viper shooting my my treb with a ram by, and I freaking I had just got a, an unpack hotkey for my trebs, okay. and I used it to save them because they they would have got one hit otherwise, right? And to me that like that was probably like eight years ago or six years ago and I still remember because <laughs> it was that clutch of a moment for me okay right? so, something that you don't really see often right yeah I don't think Hera did it that was luck he's an RNG player <laughs> okay all right just curious I did it though just I curious did. yeah you were the one who started it I I have always known that I was first I mean Jordan's Jordan's population still just 20 or 30 behind Tato he's found good raids he's killed 50 or so villagers but he's losing the same amount and he's still losing a lot of his base and he's still not up to imp, and it just feels like Tato's upgrades are just getting stronger and stronger here. Yeah. Uh, slowly, Tato's starting to... I mean, Heavy Camel's gonna be the difference maker. Heavy Camel with a... not even... doesn't even have to come in. Uh, Jordan calls a GG. Great game, though. That was a really nice attempt. I mean, Gurjara's uh, kind of match up well against Magyars, but at the same time, Magyars have yep. really good timings in Feudal Age and such. The CA are scary. But uh, I think both played really well, honestly. Yeah, it was a good game. I think it was a tricky map for Magyars to play. Uh, I think, well, Tato's map was also bad. All his goals were forward. Yep. But the way he played it made it so that uh, Jordan was in a more awkward spot. All right, so score is 1-1. So now it's time to ask you a really important question. Yeah. When you're playing a game and you finish the game, do you immediately grab your water bottle or whatever beverage and drink it? Or do you just like kind of do it whenever? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So usually, yes. I, like, I like to drink water. It's like the first. Like is it the first thing you do, like right away? Because I notice some players do that. Like Jordan, I don't know if we can do a replay on this. A production's gonna hate me, but literally, how? I, I swear it took a second for Jordan to be drinking water after he called the GG there. It was like immediate. It's because like, what else do you do? The game finished. The, the first thing you see is the uh, the the water next to you. So like, okay, let, <laughs> let me grab a drink. <laughs> I don't know. I just I I'm not saying it's a bad thing, by the way. Uh, shout out to my all my hydration homies out there, but like, I just notice it so much when I'm out of land, and it you know I'm a little self-critical. I feel like I should be doing better there, but yeah, yeah. I mean, when I'm at home, I finish a run game. I grab a cold one, my beer, woof, <laughs> get drunk as hell, much better. No, obviously not. <laughs> don't drink at home. No, well, Are you, don't it, drink, guys. It's bad for you. <laughs> I was I was gonna make a joke. I was like, is that what explained the results this week? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have you seen the copy pasta about your uh, you smuggling pre workout in the Germany? <laughs> oh yeah, almost got caught. Uh, yeah, did Thank you God actually bring pre workout with you? No. Uh, okay, come okay. On. It's a copy pasta. Okay, I didn't know. Chat, chat spam a copy pasta about tonight. Come on. No, no, I've seen enough of that. Come seen on. Seen enough of that. 
nothing just he did. Like people think I am I'm smuggling pre workout to Germany just so I can get a high on pre workout before my sets. No way. <laughs> This sounds like something that someone would say if they did exactly that. Okay, here's the replay. Okay, GG, right? Let's see. No, not Tato. Tato didn't drink. Okay, we got... Uh, we want the, the Jordan. Okay, oh, we're going to try this again. Sorry, guys. It's a, these guys have only, only done a tremendous job all week just to completely blow it right here in this moment. All right, let's, let's wait. Let's wait. Hold on. Replay. Oh, they started the next game. All right, all right. Well, we'll, we'll look at that later, people. We'll look at that later. Here we are, game number three. Ooh, this is a matchup and a half for people who've been around a long time. We've got Byzantines for Tato in the red, and we've got the Mongols for Jordan in the blue. So Mongols normally have that early edge because of the hunt bonus, but if the Byzantines survive, Hart, they normally do a pretty good job. Byzantine have a really good army composition against uh, Mongols, right? You can just play a skirmisher camel, and essentially, you counter everything Mongol does, and that's also exactly what Byzantine wants to do. But on the other hand, Mongols are a very, very fast thief, while Byzantines have a really s slow start, right? So I would personally probably drift the game away by going men at arm or something and try, try to win the, the game early, as we see a huge donut Whoa. telling Mr. T90 to, to drink water? I'll come with you, man. Yeah, let's take a sip of our waters for that. Holy crap. Crazy dono. Cheers to that guy. Yeah, I have just been paid to hydrate. Well, actually, no, that goes towards the players. But uh, that you've oh, been paid. I got, let me even, take another one. Even ninth and tenth place gets some of that. So there you go. I'm hydrating for nothing over it's here. Like, like, like hydrating for my health. What is that? Eight dollars for me. <laughs> <laughs> we take those. <laughs> well, you know, back to the matchup. You're saying, like, when you're Mongols, you're under some level of pressure to break the Byzantines, right? Yeah. So you think, like, man-at-arms is, is an option solely because of the fear of the cheap Byzantine units? I, I think it's a combination, right? It's one of Mongols' strengths, and it's a Byzantine weakness. They don't have bonuses early on compared to all the... Like, Mongols is probably the Sif that gets the most uh, amount of resources early game, right? And Byzantines literally get nothing. Look at the res collected right now. Like, <laughs> wow. it's insane. It's double for, for Jordan. Now, of course, it's when the players drop off resources too, so that's kind of tricky. Yeah. But uh, anyways... Uh, I, I don't trust Nili. Nili is next to me. Just took the the cap off my water bottle and is standing next to me. He says, "Drink water." Okay. Mm. Mm. So you needed proof? I thought he was gonna pour it on me. I thought he was putting. I'm kind of warm. If he was gonna. Up, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I start falling asleep, you know what happened. But <laughs> <laughs> if I'm left alone, Chad, or casting alone, you know what happened, man. <laughs> Uh, I really like honestly I'm pretty warm up here. I don't know about you. I might just douse myself in this for that dono, but yeah, yeah. All right, so let's look at the scouting here from Jordan if we could see. Actually, he's just still at home. Yeah, looks You like freaky Jordan. deer pushers, man. Just <laughs> he's just pushing deer. Looks like Jordan's just going to uh, open standard, open uh probably scouts it seems so. Uh, and then let's see what he does, because I think if you just play normal, if you don't play aggressive or anything as we see Tato finding two sheep from Jordan and taking them. Bro, that's your teammate. No. Oh no, it's not! It's not your team! I take them! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jordan like... Oh, yeah. Back. Oh! And he's gonna find the scout, that's huge for Jordan. He's about to hit Fiorich, I'm gonna kill the scout. Kill his former teammate scout. Yep. True, true. Yeah, here we go. Screw that guy, come here! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is the such a frustrating feeling if you're Tato. Tato is running around the pigs! He is using the pigs. Oh, he should use them to block. To separate though. himself from the enemy. What is this from Tato? That that saved the scout, honestly. He could have done it better as well. He could have used the move the sheep to block a bit more, right? It's a pig. Is it a pig? It's what? a pig. A pig, sheep, a deer, <laughs> ibex. Like they're all the same, man. <laughs> all rhinos. Actually, elephants. an ibex and I. No, no, they're all very different. The ones you just described. And, oh my God, no way! And Jordan's reaction there—that is a reaction from Jordan that knows that he got called out, and that should not have happened. Yeah, yeah. And th that's really bad. Losing your first scout is terrible for uh, for the Mongol player. I mean, that, that's essentially your advantage, right? Like yep. you're, you're playing around around. Um, Having momentum and to lose your first scout like that is massive. Uh, usually, when you get three scouts together, that's usually the number you need to start picking off units. Uh, but in this case, you lose one of them. Now you're behind uh, like 40 seconds uh, to get into that number. Now, in the in the south, Jordan is on hunt. 
He's dropped a mill there, or there's just random blue dots there for no reason. I'm assuming that that's the case. Yeah, that's big. And actually, if you really want to, it's all over the edge of the map here. So True. If you're willing I, to take that risk. Yeah, like uh, risk against skirms and spears doesn't feel that great. So I would say at least uh, transitioning to another area of hunt would make sense. But that is just, you know, my... I'm not taking the risk. I'm just I'm <laughs> telling everyone else to take the risk. You will be farming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's worth pointing out that Jordan still has the res collected. There is a... <laughs> how did you get that so fast? That is a sheep pig or a, it's or like a, it's a pig like a, sheep. It's like a big llama, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, the hell is that? It's cursed. Take it off the screen. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> Ooh, what man. What the hell was that? Yeah. This is this is like kind of our jobs here, Hart. That's, we just got paid to talk about a sheep pig. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, honestly, when you're up against the Spears and Skerms who don't have much mobility, why not take the risk? Or Because I don't think there's much risk in taking the, the hunt on the outside, right? That's what I was thinking, yeah. But watch this. Tatsu's going to know that that's out there. And he's going to find these four villages. This actually isn't too bad for Jordan, though, because he wasn't Nothing too bad. far away. You can just fight back. Yeah. This might... This might actually be good. I mean, he, he's taking HP off, and now he can engage against all of that. Yeah, shout out to those villagers there. Yeah. Especially with one skirm getting a couple hits there, and Jordan's still going to move out to the hunt. And it looks like Jordan is ready to kill this army. And the thing about the spear skirm play is, you want to get to like a mass of like 10 where they just can't engage? Right yeah. now, you could take the engagement, and Jordan does, and this will be a full clear up. Full clear up. He should move out the, the skirmishers so they don't take any damage from Tato's skirmishers. And now we see a potential snowball about to happen. I mean, this is exactly what Jordan needed. Uh, Tato moved out a bit too early, maybe. He yeah. needed more. I mean, obviously, he, he doesn't really know exactly how many scouts Jordan has, but that's a mistake, and now that's going to allow uh, Mongols to to get the game exactly the, the way they want. And honestly, with so much hunt on the map that he is using, investing that heavily into scouts doesn't really hurt your uptimes too much. So yeah. I absolutely love this uh, from Jordan so far. Uh, I think if he Ooh. plays it well, he might have the game. Okay, interesting. I mean, you know, you also have to consider, though, Byzantines can afford some losses. They are not spending that much to produce more spearmen and more skirms. And Tato's pretty well walled. Still does need to wall between the range and the house there. But Tato not hesitating to push forward yet again here. Jordan is still making army. Mm -hmm. he, he's making so much. Usually with Mongols, it's like fast feudal age pressure. Do what damage you can. And then if that doesn't work out, or, or regardless of what happens, you're transitioning to Castle Age for, like, Step Lancers here. But this is, like, full feudal from Jordan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, if you mass enough skirmishers to one-shot the spearmen from Byzantine, and you get, like, Bloodlands on your scouts, you can just take an engagement and overrun and kill, and kill in Feudal Age. Yeah. Because, uh, like, the, the best unit in Feudal Age is a scout with Bloodlands on upgrades, right? And Byzantines don't have that, while Mongols do. That was impressive there from Tato. I might want to see a replay on that one, because it's so... Easy to, to, you don't know those scouts are going to be there. You're expecting them to come back to you. And then, you know, he's got to do all this damage control here. Now, Jordan will know the spearmen are nowhere to be seen here. So he really wants to dive. But at the same time, he might sense, maybe because his villagers are exposed on the hunt, that he might need his units at home. He left there. He didn't dive. Yeah, I, I would have loved to see him playing a bit more aggressively here. And, I mean, look at the resources collected. He's not even that ahead. I think there was some idle time with the uh, with the hunters, right? It, it, they run out so fast. It's yeah. kind of hard to to always keep them actively working. And you're also spending a hundred wood on each mill, right? So maybe it's not as good as I initially thought, but I think it's still good. I just think maybe he needs to be a bit more ballsy. The thing is, Tato does have back wood line, and he's not even taking the gold yet, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. There, there really wasn't that much to hit forward. Um, either way, though. Uh, Keeping these scouts healthy for later on is not bad because Mongol Lycav get extra HP and that's also really good for engagements. Have Though their have their hearts stopped beating? Or is that maybe a technology issue? It looks like they're still living there. I don't know, man. I was sitting at like 180 heartbeats. So <laughs> 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 I, I think we've established that we're not really sure that we can trust the heart rate monitors. Uh, Tato was at like 42 a second ago, and he's in the middle of an intense game. So, uh, you know, not really sure how that one checks out. But the scouts are in, and now he's going to have a heart attack, and he's got a quick wall. <laughs> he shoots up. <laughs> Tato passes out. <laughs> Oh, man. But Tato still has the micro on the front. Jordan didn't go in with everything. There's a lot of multitasking needed right now. For Tato. 
And J Jordan will kill a Vill at the expense of a scout and some HP. This, that's that's really skirmish. good engagement for Tato on the skirms. Yeah, l losing the mass of skirmishers. Uh, now you can no longer one shot uh, the spearmen, right? I, I think that was like the critical mass. You need you need enough to, enough to do that, and also a few extra so that when Tato's skirmishers hit yours, you you still have enough left over mm -hmm. to keep one shot in the spearmen, right? And now I don't think he's gonna get to that mass. He's gonna keep what, adding them. though. What do you think? I know it's very like untypical for the Mongols here, but what about just like a Siege Workshop? First thing, Siege Workshop right away, two Scorpions. I feel like you're fine against Feudal Age Army then, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, if he's ahead enough to, to cast a Lich, sure. Uh, the, the, the thing is, what, what do you do against this? Yeah, this is tricky. Nasty. Because like, even if you fight with Villagers, you're going to lose Vils here. And Tato knows this, and Jordan is, is getting some walls set behind this. I think he's going to try and wall in his Skirms. I'm a bit confused by this one, Hart. This is messy for Jordan. Yeah, I mean, he really doesn't want to lose the skirmishers. Oh, man. Jordan, do you want to do this? Uh, who does yeah, this trap help? <laughs> yeah. Well, the skirms are all getting hit by the skirms from Jordan. And, oh, God. Like, what? how am I supposed to break this down for people? I, I can see villagers dying. I see some spearmen are dying. But in the end, Tato's going to take yeah. uh, what he can. All the women grabbing the knife and fighting back to the spearmen and somehow winning. That's actually good for Jordan. That, that was, was actually that was really, really good for Jordan. Yeah, he only lost two villagers. That's nothing. I mean, yeah, that, that, that was a really good trade. He got rid of the, the spearmen, which honestly was the dangerous part of that army. At the end of the day, spears and skirms don't really do much to, to kill villagers, right? And... It was really hard for Tato to get the right grouping there. Now, there might be some weak vills in here. Yeah, yeah, okay, so that's part of it, right? If Tato really micros here, you could maybe kill another couple villagers. He has to check the HP. You might as well go for it, Tato, because you're going to lose those skirms anyways. I think he's looking at home right now. And Jordan in Castle Age adds his first Lancer. And uh, only lost three vills in this game, killed two. And he's going to move over to Tato's base with Tato being 45 seconds yet from Castle Age. Yeah. Uh, so we see Tato adding a That's second so table, good. so it's going to be a full camel play by him. Uh, so I, I kind of um, wish he had kept his skirmishers alive. I feel like they're, they they block a few unit uh, army composition switches from the Mongols, right? If you keep the skirmishers alive for later, they, they can't really go Mangudais and such. Uh -huh. So Can we see Tato's Fog of War here, Vodka? I just want to see. Okay, so technically, if Tato is, is looking to the right corner, since he's scouted, he would be able to see the dead deer. If we could just get a quick look to the right corner, that that would that would be the left. But the right, yeah, right there, you got that. So you could see that, and you know that there's villagers there. Oh, he's killing them. He's actually going to kill them, but I'm wondering if he sends a unit over, he could kill the villagers as well, right? Yeah, maybe that would have been a better choice, right? Make one knight right away instead of a camel and just send it there. Yeah, that's great scouting from Tato, honestly. He doesn't have the scouting bonus the Mongols do, but I think he recognized early oh, on about just... the hunt. Yep, yep. Okay, so I think it's the the best unit against Lancers are the Camels, but they do miss Bloodlines, which means they could also melt fast enough for the Lancers to come out on top with a Snowball. So uh, I think Monks are going to be the game-changing unit here. If one of them adds them and the other one doesn't, that could really make a big difference here. That wood efficiency is is just not good to look at there for Tato. He needs to clear this stuff up because that is not pretty right now. Yeah. He's got armor. Um, Surprising how even the resources collected are, though. Yeah, true. I think it's just because it, Jordan doesn't have the farming set up, right? Because yeah. he took so much hunt. It really feels like Jordan's eco is a bit dependent on that, whereas the farming is super consistent for you. Maybe he overdid it. Like, I was happy when, when he had only four on hand, but when I saw him sending the second group of four, I thought that was a bit too much. Like, I've seen this mistake happen very often. Yep. You overcommit yep. to natural resources, and then you're... You know, your farming is just not uh, where it has to be. Yeah, and I think Tato's pulling into some type of an eco lead because of that. And I, I still got to take us back to that scouting, though. That villager kill right there from Tato was so sick. I know it's just one, but he's defended nicely. The KD might look bad, but he's Byzantines. It doesn't matter. These skirmishers are all going to die to camels, potentially. So to turn this around, and Tato is going to be on three TCs. And booming up towards Imp, and this is the stage of the game we mentioned in Dark Age where Byzantines feel like the superior civilization. Byzantines just need to spam units. They, like, there's no secret to how they have to play. Mongols have to figure out what the hell they do because everything you do, it, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. 
Um, and this is not just with the Mongols against Byzantines, too. It's like the majority of civilizations, if they haven't used their early bonuses against Byzantines, when it gets to this stage, if it's even, the Byzantines can pretty much do anything and have a really good chance at winning the game. Yeah, exactly. So something that could have worked, for example, is uh, a scout into f into archery range and then expo mangonel or something like that. Uh, but like, it, it's just really hard to make it's it work. If, uh, if Byzantine manages to stabilize and they get on the cheap units, they're just really hard to What start. a find from Tato. He find. scouted like 97.1% of the map. And, you know, Jordan maybe thought if he finds me on the right, he's never going to find me on the left. But Tato, this is incredible, dude. Like, I would say that the majority of players even here wouldn't they find that group. Sense. They wouldn't find that group at all. That group would, like, loop around to the other corner, you know, maybe make some sneaky buildings later on. But... The funny thing is, That's I think sick. Tato would not have noticed to begin with if he never saw the second group of uh, hunters moving out to the left. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, I yeah. Think, uh, I think he was like, oh, he's trying to use the hunt on the map. Okay. I need to watch out for that. I also would say that, I, you know, Doubt has done the, the hunt a lot to the extremes. I think it's a discussion that's probably been had. These are, I know Jordan just left GL, but former teammates discussing, uh, who have probably discussed how to utilize Mongols to the best of their ability. Um, I would say, for example, like you and Leary, uh, two AM players, you guys would probably just take maybe the one hunt pile and then farm right away. Yeah. Whereas uh, Jordan Tato, they would they they tend to do this. So it could be a lot of knowledge about the matchup player wise. Yeah, it's something that can pay off for sure. But also, it it can make your game harder just by you need to micro more units, you need to start to take care of them, and so on and so on. Usually, just farming is a uh, way more consistent and safer way of approaching games, right? Uh, especially as the game goes on when a few more resources doesn't make as much difference. Yep, makes sense. But maybe if you feel like it's a bad matchup in the mid game, maybe you take more risks because of it. And that's what Jordan was doing. And Res Collected's close, 69 villagers for both, 20 army. A very nice game here, nice conversion there from Tato. And, uh, or, or from Jordan. And Jordan's actually gonna get three conversions, but he will most likely lose all three monks. Yeah, the monks should die. Very important to get rid of them. And I think another conversion just happened there on the front yeah. as well. Jordan really getting a lot of converts here. Fire, so he's going to be switching to Pikeman. Or he's already on Pikeman. Uh, let's see what he does with that, though. Uh, that was probably going to be looking to get a, a castle up soon, adding another stable. Another stable, that's interesting. Uh, I like this a lot, actually. Camels? Yeah, I, I like, like, Scorpion. Camel with some monks just to push the middle. And I love the fourth TC. Both are doing it, but this is not a game where players really have armies where they can split up and raid like a night war would be. Mm -hmm. This is all about the middle control. And with that gold there from Jordan, I think if you pressure that, get a good position there, you might be happy with things. Uh, monks aren't going to be happy pretty soon, but one survives. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, I think the, the correct play even for Tato would have been to switch into Archie Rangers. Just because that way you block everything, right? If you're just you're already on cameras, you already have enough that the enemy will not want to make cavalry. Uh, I think committing heavier into camels could open a window where uh, Jordan has pikemen to deal with your with your camels. Yeah, and I mean the pikes are engaging right there. The pikes have Heavy great dogs. upgrades actually. They have insane upgrades. So this is this yeah, it could be really good for Jordan. Jordan's going to take out the Siege. Jordan might even be able to get the hill against the Monk. And Jordan's on five TCs behind this, and he's not going to mind taking a fight with Pikeman up against Camels. Yeah, not a bad fight at all. Still, Tata comes out on top, though. He has the numbers. But still, they're Pikes, so you just make more. The, yep. the same way you make with the Camels, right? You just ca you, uh, camel, whatever, and be something. I'll make another one. Kind of thing. Yeah, Tato, for as good as his scouting was in this game, he didn't actually know his opponent even had Pikeman tech before he advanced forward there. Mm -hmm. But he had a point where he figured, I just have to fight. Yeah. And he's going to go for a lead skirm now, which feels very natural. Yeah, yeah. I, I would maybe prefer the Expo. That they're just, like, they kill the Pikeman faster. But maybe he feels like he doesn't have enough gold income just yet. Also, Skirmishers, Peace and Team, it also makes sense. Yep. And, well, a lot of those Skirmishers mixed in there for Jordan aren't upgraded yet, so in the army count, they're not really helping. And still, the numbers are solid there for Tato, who doesn't want to lose this hill. I think it's really important that Tato finds out sooner rather than later that there's a castle going up for Jordan, because Jordan might want to switch fully into Mangadai now, which could be great against the Camels. Yeah. 
Jordan's taking just a little bit too many bad fights there with the Pikeman. I think if he was a bit more patient and we and just waited oh for a bigger Oh god. Mass, this could be denied. It's really close. Okay, well now it's probably fine, but... Yeah, yeah it's fine, it's fine. I, I think that was feeling fine. Like, he doesn't need to take any risk. He knows he's gonna get the middle hills and then it's just camel skirmisher traps. Also, three relics. Three relics. And it's control, two fish. relics for Jordan. Yep, so that's a big deal. I would like to see, like, let, let's say, you know, five years from now, right? Yeah. Nilly has come back and is hosting uh, NAC. Let's let's hope seven, we're at eight, seven. Eight, eight, seven or eight at that point, right? Five years. Um, I would like to see, like, everybody. One villager outpost that whole side. Just just, just outpost. Like, it doesn't hurt, right? You lose a villager at 108 villagers, it doesn't hurt you at all. But getting that vision and knowing when awesome. the golds are spread out like that is amazing. And I just think outposting is so huge, so... Uh, we'll see. Another fight here for Jordan. I guess Jordan realizes he can't get away from this fight. He's just going to die anyway, so he takes a trade. But the trades have not been the best for him the last two engagements. Uh, th those guys have families. Like, they're just being thrown away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is like, the most realistic battle ever, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like, we don't give I a don't crap know, about you. <laughs> I guess send him in to die. <laughs> and no. Even with that, the score still hasn't uh, really shifted too much, which means like you just shows how good pikemen are against non yep. and camels, right? Yeah, the, the skirmisher number is looking really good for Tato, whose main the, the main units that are threatening him would be the pikemen, which I would guess we're not going to see much more of, uh, because Mongols don't get halb and generally struggle in that area. But then the Mangadai, an elite skirm, is so cheap for the Byzantines and is so good against that. Tato is outposting the right side. We'll see how far he advances along with those outposts, but eventually we'll look at Tato's vision. And with the Byzantines, dude, you just see everything with, with a few outposts. Yeah, uh, outposting, as, as you were saying, like it's so important. I personally love doing it every time I, I try to. Well, every time I remember, I just start outposting the sides. Yeah, I, th I think that's something something I'm actually good at, which is a weird thing, but uh, I'm mindful about it too because the the vision is just so game changing. Yeah, um, have you heard of the house post? No. So there's a player, it, this is going to be so uninteresting for you, but just nod your head like this is exciting. There's a player who's been playing for like 15 years, Ubetnir, you might know him. Yeah. Okay, well, like 2K2 yeah. or something? Yeah. So he always, I, I think it's him, I have yet to verify this, but he always goes house, house, outpost. All together, it's the same shape every time, he's just his habit. What the hell? And it's insane because players... Eventually you have vision. Yeah, you, you get a lot of vision and then it's much harder to kill. Whereas like this, right there, that outpost is going to go down. So, I don't know, it's just something to, oh, wait, to so think like, about. So, uh, like, instead of the out... Sur surrounded, surrounded by... By two houses. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, so it's like house, house, and then outpost in between them, yeah, yeah. all connected. And it prevents what just happened right there, right? And then, of course, houses aren't that expensive at this stage of the game, yeah. so... Okay, mm, that's interesting. Maybe new meta stuff, we'll see. Tatsu, though, has got a crazy army. 20 camels, and then 26 skirmishers. And his eco is phenomenal as well. His upgrades are all in, right? Like, look at Jordan doesn't have Bosol, for example, which is really hurting him. Yeah. And it, 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 Tato has set up his castles like a player who feels, I cannot lose this game if this goes late. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tato just knows, right? He's going to have a really strong timing with the Tress, with the Skirmishers. What does Jordan do? Jordan doesn't, doesn't have Bosol yet either. He's going to go Drill. Drill? Drill Onager? He's making Manganel? Drill Onager for Jordan? What? I mean, if, if that works, hats off to him. Bro, this could be insane. So Drill will make the siege faster. Onager uh, will upgrade those manganels there. With Pikeman? <laughs> it, so feel, it, it feels like it, it is weird, right, in some ways. But honestly, on paper, I actually think it is maybe his best choice. You think about it, right? You try Manganite, it will not work. You're going to lose that castle. You try Hussar, it will not work. There's camels. Try some of them out of the box, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, like, the pikes defend the onagers from the camels, and then the onagers kill the skirms. It does make sense here, even though it's unique for the Mongols to try yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Until bombard cannons come in, and then you have to micro a lot. But then, <laughs> but then let's say you eventually get to see Chonager with Drill and Ooh. Pikemen and, and Hazar. Suddenly, you might have a winning army composition, but that's just so far away, right? Oh, man. How does how is Tato, when he's tread pushing the main area, the main focus area that's probably going to decide this game, focus on this heart? That is so Crazy. good. Crazy. The castle might be denied, and there's the big fight, and we missed some shots there, but most of the auditors actually ended up getting taken out, but so did the Trebs. So not Jordan gets to hold on for a bit longer here. Yeah, yeah, this is not too bad. He's gaining time. Uh, do we see any Bombard cannons in the queue? No. 
Oh, we see redemption on the queue for Tato, so that's gonna be his answer to. That's the smart. Runner. It's just like Byzantines have everything, right? Byzantine. Like now we just have a couple monks that'll get upgraded to convert the onagers. That castle was denied, and there's gonna be another castle there from Tato on the left. And oh well, castle. Oh, does that castle go up? It does, right? The one on the right. That's a lot of vills. Uh, it should go up, uh, but it's gonna be costly, though. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if there was Arbalest, maybe it doesn't. Skirmishers. There they go. And Camels. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. It's fine. I, I think he started to notice a bit earlier, and he patrolled uh, the choke point there, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't go up. Still okay. worth it, though, to obviously force that many reactions, kill that many villagers. Tato's resources are nuts. I would love to see Elite Cataphract here. You've got, look at the Ants. beauty of these castles, man. Three castles along the middle. Got the what for what? Uh, uh, what? Killed uh, Blake Oninger, man. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of true. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah that there was, you go. What, is that a fake unit, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the caster knows more than me. That's why I'm out. <laughs> oh, man. The camels getting kills, and the Cataphracts will be great against the infantry, which is the big deal here. And there could be more castles here for Tato, who's still waiting for an opportunity to take out that middle castle. But he's distracting Jordan right now. And yeah, Lee Cataphract is in. That unit's incredible. Uh, that, that's making making a point, you know? Bro, I have Elite Cataphractos. <laughs> Get out of my game. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's not a unit you see that frequently. Yeah, yeah. It's like a like a based move to, to go for something like that. Yeah, it, look, just, Tato's just got so many random units in Jordan's eco. I mean, a lot of these units are going to die, though, uh, there because of the well-placed castle there from Jordan. And Jordan has three castles still, and he's going into Mangadai now. And Mangadai will kill Cataphract. So he bought himself time to get to his ideal unit, the Mangadai, with the Onager Pike Maneuver. Yeah, yeah. Look at him patrolling the house. See my point? Imagine if that's two houses and an outpost. So annoying, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see how the Cataphract do. They Trap. Just, they just die and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Heart is so much faith in the Cataphracts right now, it's unbelievable. I think they're killing a trap. No, they are not. But they see the Onagers, and they're underneath that castle, and that castle is currently going to be trapped down by Tato, I believe right above this. And Jordan needs to respond with the Onagers. These guys are speedy, but the Cataphracts are ready, and the Cataphracts are going to split. Whoop! Oh, no. oh, God. Oh, we're not. Ah. Sorry. I expected that. Told you. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cataphracts still going in there for the Onagers. Yeah, that, and that the Onagers go up. down. Onagers go down. Castle goes down soon. And even Logistica. Heart, what does Logistica sure do? Trample damage, man. Yeah, they don't actually. Yeah, they don't actually. It's a little confusing. They don't like actually trample on anything. You can't see it. But if there's units nearby, they will take more damage. You don't want to. Ride into like, a clump like of damage? cataphracts. It's like splash damage. Yep. Okay, okay. Sounds cooler. It's trample. Trample is, is sounds way cooler. Yep. Oh. But Big. I don't think he hit anything. Man, I mean, just look at the gold count for Jordan right now. I know he spent a lot of it. But he doesn't really have as much to, to take from the sides. Oh my god, we've got a big castle on the left side for Tato. That castle is at 80%. That castle's not going up. Wow. Maybe a little too aggressive there for Tato? Or can he get away with such a loss? It's aggressive, but at the same time, it's a distraction, right? Like, look at what's happening on the other sides of the map yeah. while Jordan tries to deny that. I mean, he knows that uh, Jordan just doesn't have... He cannot be everywhere. Yeah. He, every time there's an attack, he needs to send a, a bunch of units, while Tato just needs to send a few cataphracts, few camels, and then Jordan needs to keep reacting with a lot more units than that. Yep, and then it's he will see the Mangadai arrive to the middle, so he will loop to the left with the cataphracts, and this will just be a continuous cycle from Tato, who actually made skirmishers in the in the path that Jordan's taking with his Mangadai production from that very right corner. Maybe that was a problem here for Jordan, is, is his castles were so far away, but it, it's hard to say that when the gold's there. Yeah, I need to defend something, right? Yeah, yeah. And Tato's pop, 190 now, his eco's still untouched. That's a lot of Mangadai. It's going to be hard to kill the Mangadai, but I think Jordan will know that while he could survive for another 20 minutes with those things, he's never going to win this game. Yeah, no way. And no. see what I mean? Immediately. Drink water. Immediately, they, they drink the water uh, to hydrate up here, but, um, you know, First game, we took like the map was maybe a little bit better for Jordan, maybe Siv, I don't know, but he played so good. And then Tato, it's like he, he kicked it up a notch the last two games to get up 2-1. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, 
Uh, jo Jordan played quite well as well, honestly. I, I just... The, uh, what, what I look back to is I think he had a time in Infuel Age that he really, really, really needed to, yeah. to abuse. Like, m m even with like forward towers, something. After that cleanup, he needed to make something happen, and he kind of just didn't. And what happened after was just inevitable. It's just how the matchup goes in uh, uh, Byzantine against Mongols. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think, I mean, Jordan had that slight reaction when he lost that scout, and I think he was like, oh, man, that's so bad. Like, if we, if Jordan ends up winning this, we give him a winner's interview, we ask him, I guarantee you he goes back to that scout. That's always annoying. Like, being Mongols and losing your first scout, one of the worst feelings. Yep. And Tato looks like he's trying to wake himself up the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we need some more water. Yeah. I mean, I imagine, the, like, when you're in there, do you kind of forget that the camera's on you at all times, or are you very much aware of that? I I don't know. no I I think it's not that uh, intrusive the the way the room is set up like okay. you don't really feel like you're being observed or anything. okay it's quite nice quite nice actually I feel more uncomfortable at home when I'm streaming and using a webcam like there there I feel observed <laughs> but when I'm playing here and there's freaking twenty times more people watching me I don't even I don't even notice man I don't okay. even think about it interesting well I mean like at home right it's also like your house your room so there's always that one nerd who's like hey what is that the thing in the back of your ground you messy and it's like I don't know like a yeah. sock or something and people you know people are weird with that you know yeah, they're nitpicky the was there a poop boxer on your, on your <laughs> bed or something you know like come on man <laughs> I don't know so if classic. anyone's ever asked that ah, I've seen it I've seen it yeah yeah well thank you for that Anyways, uh, we do have an established break time here after game three. And Tato's taking the break. Jordan's just sitting there. We have a little bit of time to kill. So I'm trying to remember. So you, I, I believe, uh, this, is, this is awkward, but you did just make a bad joke at my expense. So I believe it is confirmed that you are out as of the previous series, right? Is that the case? Do you have any hope? Or you're no, I can't. I need Andy to win. Okay, all right. Freaking so Andy, man. Freak, freaking freak, Andy, freaking man. Andy. <laughs> okay, but Leary needed Yo to win to have a chance. Um, I believe he needs Jordan to win. But then Doubt need. Oh, I think that like the next series, Hera Viper. There's there's big implications for Doubt and for Leary as well. Yeah. I forget what it is. Whereas for Hera, Hera and Basically, Viper in the next series, they don't actually. Things are a little bit more solidified for them, so the next series is there's not as much riding on it. Here we go. As you could you could see why I'm confused, guys. Like read this and then try and recall it in 40 yeah, so seconds. ACCM has to win. Uh, for for Lear to make it true, ACCM has to win, and then Jordan or Viper need to win. So Jordan or Jordan's, Viper. Okay. Yeah, Jordan's losing right now, so it will be up to Viper. Who does Viper play against? Hera. Hera. But you can see like Hera regardless finishes first or second, which means he gets a bye to a semifinal. Viper regardless ends up getting a bye to to uh, third or fourth position. So it's like, that's going to be a hype series, Hera Viper, but the conversations around the house already kind of just like the Hera Viper series has more implications for other people than it really does for them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm still, like, it's still Hera Viper, right? They're going to give it's it... It's great like, games, yeah. It's such a, such a clash of, you know... Just big players and, and fan fan bases and such. Like I, I expect them to to give it their all. I'm sure that they won't show every single strat, but I, there's still so, like so many uh, strats that have already been shown. Yep, yep. That I expect them to do their best with those. Yep. And and yeah, it's gonna be a banger. And well, Liria has to be praying. You go, Jordi. <laughs> <laughs> and that well, that's sleeping probably still. Well, actually. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if they're sitting in the in like the living room area watching or not. Uh, I know Leary was before. We could see maybe who's chilling there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there we are. I don't know. Uh, there's Is that like Leary's Roxy legs? always caught eating. Is that Roxy? That is Roxy. Very <laughs> elegant hat. And there's oh. Dave. And then I think that's someone's foot on the someone's left. Someone's feet? Is, is, is that, uh, that, that must be Larry. <laughs> I think that is Leary there. So Leary is not left. Leary is intently watching this and uh, Nilly showing us his old ballet skills. And here we are, game number four. All right, so left side of the map or the uh, the west side of the map, we have Tato, one win away from a direct buy to the semis, which would be huge for him. You get two days off. You get to watch everyone else's strats. You get to chill. And uh, Tato also has a very interesting theory. He's followed this every night. Tato says, for every beer you drink the night before, you get a win. <laughs> and Tato has consistently had three in the evenings. And I asked Tato, I said, hey, if you go bye to the semifinals, I'm pretty sure they're best of nines. What do you do? And Tato said, 
we will see. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, maybe with two days off, you can kind of cheat it a bit and have like two one day, three the other. I don't know. <laughs> what, what happens if I join uh, Tato with the beers then? No, no, no. It's too late. Actually, it worked because the, the other day I had the beer with him and I, I did win a game. Yes, yeah, see, there you go. I mean, wow. it's funny. I remember uh, last year he told ACCM that. It's ACCM, man. You got to drink. <laughs> you got to drink, man. Yo, <laughs> and it, that's how they say cheers. And ACCM, I remember. I could be misremembering this, but my, my brain comes up with funny things. ACCM was like, it, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and he was super mad, probably. Yeah. You well, made me drink and I didn't win. But I mean, that's like that's part of the fun here, right? I hope people get that, right? You know, we get have time to hang out, watch some fun games, and obviously, you guys are here to be really competitive. I get that, and it can be easy to get down on yourself and frustrated. But at the end of the day, when you're back at home, thousands of miles away from everyone, you're not going to have the opportunity. So I'm going to be. And do you remember the experience when you're in this uh, in this event? Like the exactly, experience of meeting yeah. everybody, yep. chilling, like uh, sharing the the same environment with them for for so many days. Uh, yeah, it, it's a great experience. Like I, I, I can speak for myself, right? I, I was so sad the first few days because I couldn't, I was not performing as I was hoping to. But like at some point, it's just like I don't, I, I'm not gonna get to experience this very often yep, uh, yep. again, right? N none of us. So it's about making the best out of it. Absolutely. And part of that is, of course, like casting like this, which I think viewers have appreciated today. Uh, I don't think anyone else would have called the unit fake today, Hart. <laughs> so thanks for that perspective. <laughs> um, They're not real, man, trust. But like, we've got like the, the greatest potential camel war here. Mm -hmm. Saracen camels with insane HP. Hindustani Imperial Age camels. Um, could be, could be kind of a banger here. Or I don't know if you can call camel war a banger, but uh, oh. we'll see. I mean, both sips got buffs recently, right? So yep. uh, it's interesting how that has changed everything because we didn't see m much of either of them for a while. And now we see both of them. Uh, every time there's this kind of maps you know, of Acropolis, Outcrops, all, all of these really call for, for these camel sips. Um, it's a quite interesting matchup. Yeah. Uh, I, I, like Sar Saracens has the, the option of trying to play it like Expo Camel. Yeah. And while Indusanis are pretty much dead stuck on, on camels, I mean, I guess they can, they can mix in skirmishers, but, but eh. Uh, can we see the, the back, sorry to interrupt, can we see the back of Tato's base, like along the edge? Okay, keep keep going. Okay, this sucks for Tato. Like, the, well, the wall potential is still kind of there, actually. Well, uh, uh, what, what about to the other side? What the hell are those wood lines? Yeah, so so the thing is, you can't wall on the rocks. I yeah. was looking to see if there's a full wall potential for Tato. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Compare that to Jordan's wood lines in his base. Like, no way Jordan has that as well. Yeah, like, the, the wood lines for, for Tato are, are, like, so much nicer, actually. Uh, at the back, really? Because I, I look at I look at Tato's lumber camp and I almost barfed a little bit. Really? Yeah. Like no, 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 not that, not that one. That I mean, that, that's so much wood. That's like two wood lines. So two, two. Wood you gotta travel twice. like you gotta travel like oh, sixteen okay, meters to get the other trees. I mean, it's about lumber camp, but he could have made it a bit farther up, and it would have been pretty good. Uh, I mean, Com I compared to what you usually get. Okay, it, okay. It, okay. Either okay. it's really good, or I've been making really dumb lumber camps. Okay, got it. <laughs> Might be a little bit of both. Yeah. Well, I mean, the stone's gonna be awkward to get there too. I mean, Tato went double lumber camp, which is I I would consider for nine build start uncommon. Most players are just going for the one lumber camp, like Jordan did. No. Uh, and we're gonna see it walled up. I mean, it's pretty like weird positioning of the of the hills here and where they are positioned. Yeah. So I think it might take players a little bit of time to figure out what's going on here. But there, Tato scouts Jordan. Jordan already has a spear. Bonk. Oh, oh, oh. is that a double hit? No. Close. Yeah. So my LTC for Tato. Remember that uh, in few elites. <coughs> Industanis definitely feel a bit smoother since they have uh, a bit of a discount on the villagers. That kind of gives you a, a smoother early game, right? Yeah. And that does matter. But Saracens eventually catches up when they make a market. And that's where their magic lays. Uh, that you just buy, sell stuff. You, you're somehow always profiting. So that, that's what feels good, man. What do you think about this? You just stay food wood heavy, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to make a market anyways with the Saracens. You make the market, you sell some excess wood just to get the gold for bloodlines. Your opponent never sees you on gold. Your opponent goes into a scout fight like, hey, I'm a beast, and then they, they die because they of clapped. bloodlines. Eh, I mean, that's not bad, not bad. Okay. I like that. I mean, market's going to come up. I just saw the wood disappear. Maybe he seeded farms, though. 
But it feels a little early for a market, honestly, so. I, I wouldn't mind an early market like this just because you can sell the stone and then buy wood or food with that. Yep, yep. Uh, I think it's worth it even. Uh, I, I do it on Arabia sometimes and it doesn't feel bad. Well, the thing that... It's like a nice boost. Yeah, the thing is, it's like if you think this is a camel war, and there's reasons for it to switch into other things with the walls, but I don't think it, it like hurts to drop it early with the Saracens. And you can like play completely standard with this Civ towards crossbow, towards knight even, if the situation calls for it, and just use the market as a boost. That's what's so nice. Mm -hmm. I think if they didn't get knights like the Hindustanis, they'd be a little bit more one-sided. But a bonus that's big with the Hindustanis is they do additional bonus damage against buildings with their stable units. So uh, houses, the gate there, all that stuff a little bit more vulnerable, potentially. Nice walling from Tato. I'm glad we checked that. He was able to figure that one out. And uh, he's on the defensive right now with quite a few spearmen. And switching to archers. So he's going to be go... And he didn't do horse color again, which uh, to me indicates that he's going to try to play ultra aggressive in Kasserich. I mean... Uh, he, he sees that uh, forward wood line by Jordan, right? That, that's a great place to hit. Jordan immediately reacts with his own archery range. So yep. We're going to see his camera for, from him. And, and I, I think this is going to end up being Tato on Expos and probably Siege against Jordan on Skirmishers and Siege. Okay. And then whoever micros better wins. All right, we'll see. And Jordan adding the skirms already. Tato just lost a scout. He doesn't have the biggest scout number, which is what you're going to want if there's skirms out. Yeah, yeah. It's very important to lose the scouts exactly for that reason. Because uh, if, you're, if you're switching to archers, the enemy sees that, then he's likely to do the skirmishers, and that's when your scouts get value, yep. right? So. I like this from Jordan. He was kind of lingering where Tato wanted him to be. But now he's he's going to Tato's base. And obviously Tato's got the spears, but that's the thing. It's like those spears aren't advancing forward with the archers. Yep. Uh, Tato might just choose to leave the archers and spearmen at home and click up to castle. Like, you feel so much pressure against the Saracens because you feel... You never know when they're going to be Yeah, out. exactly. Like, you, everyone has this natural game sense, but when the Saracens are playing, you just don't know, man. Like, you don't know what's going on inside that building. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> what happens when you play against Doubt, man. Like, you, you, you just hit few LH, but the guy's already making a mark, and you're like, oh, what the he's, uh, he's about to click up? Like, I, need, I need my own market, too. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's not even using it yet. He's yeah, just he, like just, he just makes it just in case. <laughs> and you're panicking because of it. It's a mental factor, man. Are you speaking from experience from a series yesterday? From exper not, from exp uh, not necessarily from yesterday, but I I've seen, like, uh, sometimes I watch NBL, <laughs> and he hates playing against that, so it's funny to me. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Bloodline's coming in for only four scouts, but if he gets that number up a bit... He wants a clear up. It could be really sick. I don't think you can get a clear up with four scouts, though, right? Yeah, he definitely needs more. Armor's coming in for Jordan. Obviously, Jordan has to mine the gold and whatnot. Jordan has a good bloodlines timing right behind this, I think, though. He stalled scout production. He needs 10 more gold and 20... Now, zero food. He's actually at the spot he needs to be. And he's going to queue wheelbarrow and bloodlines. Yeah, Ooh, so this is huge. Yeah, they're both going to go... Uh, heavy few elite here, which is interesting. I think this is going to favor Indusanisto. They're saving on villagers. Uh, he also has horse collar, so that's eventually going to come in. We're going to see Tato having to reseed farm soon. And look, only four scouts, but nice pick off there from Tato. He still has more spears. This is a micro battle, right? Like you said before, would you say it's easier to be in Jordan or Tato's position right now? I think Jordan's units are more disposable, so like he doesn't mind if he loses a skirmisher or something. But the, this fight, I mean, there's still two spears seen. They're getting a lot of damage. Oh, Jordan didn't kill the spears! And the archers are, are still attacking downhill, right? So I think this went as good as it could have for Tato, but I, I don't like the fight for Tato at all. Okay, yeah, yeah so he loses Unless. the fight. Uh, I don't know. I actually think... There's another scout coming up from, I don't know what. Auto where. scout? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, Where just did that scout come from? Random dude <laughs> coming from the other side of the map to help. Yeah, Tato maybe was scouting with it, but it was a fresh scout. And yeah, in the end, scrims are going to go down, but we're going to see more and more scouts from both players here. I think that was a fine fight for Tato, uh, all things considered. Like, it, I don't think it's good enough, but I think Jordan, with a bit uh, more patience, he could have taken a way better engagement there. Yeah. So I think Tato got as good as he could have asked for. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this because you want to go crossbow, potentially. You have the more dangerous crossbow sieve, and now all the skirms are gone. Yeah. Now, on the flip side of things, as Jordan adjusts himself in his chair there, uh, a lot of archers died for Tato. So that's the positive there for Jordan, too. So and The question is, will he try to remaster them? Uh, it seems like he is. He's got three for now. I... <laughs> 
Okay, tell me what you think about this. Your opponent has skirms, your opponent has scouts. I see what a lot of players do when they get to Castle Age faster with the Saracens here. Is they're like, okay, it'll be a camel war. I don't want to make knights into strong camels. But I would like to see the first two units created out of stables be two knights. Because I feel like those two knights offer you so much more against spearmen and against skirms. Mm -hmm. And then if you need to, switch into camels. Thoughts? Yeah, and also if you have expos, then even if the enemy is making camels, he can't really engage against your knights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yep. because you will just micro them down, right? So I... I, I I agree. I, I think that's uh, a, go a good idea. It's something good to do. Okay. I mean, Tato right now is just holding to the hill. Look, this is what we were talking about. They both made equal amounts of army, the KD 16 to 16, but Tato, with the market, is already up. And he's like way faster here from Jordan, who has to sell all his stone. And then, of course, he'll see the prices are all over the place, yeah. so he's got the <laughs> paranoia in, it, in him. And yeah, he, like, he clicks uh, up now. For all you know, Tato's about to hit him here like. <laughs> <laughs> market, man. You, you, you never know how that works. Oh man, Jordan. Ooh, Ooh that's a really good engagement for Jordan. Uh, that that looked look better than it was, I think. Well, yeah, well, I mean, the archers, unfortunately, were just so close to going down. Yeah. But there he snipes one. Yeah, I think Let's Tato, see what Tato does. I think Tato has to stop making archers just because he will never be able to mass enough to make a difference anymore. And, and yeah, I mean, resources collected uh, quite even. Obviously, Jordan saving some on, on villagers, which is not accounted for. Fair warning to you and viewers. If we see Mamelukes in this game, I will be very loud. Just letting you know. But Mamelukes should be terrible, right? Ag against <laughs> Sunny's Camels. Way to ruin the hype, bro. But, but I don't want to lie to the viewers. Mamelukes? Like, come on, man. He's against uh, the best Camels in the game. I like how this is the first time we've casted together, and you're just, like, shooting down all my good <laughs> ideas. You are. <laughs> <laughs> You're casting with me like we've been casting together for five years. <laughs> uh, N never run my Lucas, man. I <laughs> that, <laughs> they, they, they are fake as well. They are fake. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it takes time to mass. You need a castle. Why do that when you can do what Tato's doing now? He is just going to make camels, but he's going to make camels into a player who's going to make camels. And the Saracen camels have additional HP. So the Hindustani camels attack faster. So they're going to get more hits in, but they need more hits. So it, I, I don't know the math on it in like a 1v1. Maybe someone could do that for us. But at the very least, I'm going to consider it even. I don't think the Hindustanis have any real advantage. Yeah. If anything, they like the difference is probably by one hit. So it might come down to like patrol or who hits first, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Those skirmishers are trolling Jordan so hard right oh now. Oh my god. Just delete them. Delete them, please. They <laughs> deserve it. Uh, oh, there is a lumber camp instead. Yeah, those archers are trying to find those vills. Tato will see the TCs going up. And TC on the hill for Tato, actually, in a very interesting spot on the top of his mountain. You probably don't consider that a mountain. A hill? And it's a, it's a, it's a, is it a crop? <laughs> it's an Acropolis, I'm pretty an sure. <laughs> an A-crop? An A, an A-crop. But what if there's multiple? Is it... It's not A-crop anymore. Well, that's it's, bro, you're, you're, it's you're the, the American. The huh? crops. I don't know. I'm just being stupid right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tato going crossbow. But he only has eight right now. But he does also have six camels mixed in. And it's six camels against six camels and like ten crossbows. So this, this is tough for Jordan right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be, be down to just a boom game, but I think in this initial win, right? win that, right? They eventually get to... I think we've seen this similar match. I think I, I remember seeing a, a game like this between Viper and Mr. Joe for Middle East tournament. Which used the same settings as NAC, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was exactly this matchup, I believe, in the Stanis against Saracens. Uh -huh. and I, I think it just hits a point where Industanis will outboom you, and, naturally. And, yeah. And they also have the better units. So do we, we do see Expo on the field by Tato. He, he did end up making those. It's crazy how Tato's not hitting the gold. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I assume his Fog of War shows that gold, but that would have maybe been a position to go to. I think Tato's oh. paranoid that, oh, he doesn't know about it. Um. That explains it. But, I mean, I think Tato also will benefit from going back right now because he's far from his reinforcements. And you really want that crossbow number to be around 20 to be really effective. So, yeah, yeah. I'll get and to keep his numbers. It's scary to be out there with your crossbows because you lose them once, you're not getting them back. Yeah. Uh, it's just really hard to remass. And... Like, he probably knows as well. Like, he for sure uh, watched that game between Joe and Viper, right? So he would know that if he loses the Exo Mass and he doesn't get to, to Imp with Aralest, 
uh, he will lose. And also, he still has a time later on. Yep. He, he does, he's not forced to do something right now. He can wait till later uh, to like late Castle Age when he masses enough camels and Expos with upgrades to take a fight then. Uh, so he doesn't really have to risk it right now. And I like that he's playing it a bit safer. Yep, we're going to look at Jordan's point of view here. He's got a nice little grass mod. Things are looking very smooth there, but you know Jordan knows those crossbows backed away, and he's looking to, to start a push down here. Now, sometimes Tato would naturally actually TC in this area, um, so, but I think Tato has, has done the right thing to TC elsewhere. We'll see that in a second. And there's the army. Jordan didn't know where it was. Great reaction time there from Jordan. Yeah, this is yeah. beautiful. But a lot of pressure. That's his main wooden come right now. It's not fun to deal with this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you engage? You, you need to bring in the siege, but the siege is so far away still. Yeah. And this is annoying. This is gonna mess up your economy. Suddenly, you have no more wood income, and everybody is on gold. And Tata behind this can free boom, but 71 villagers for Jordan. He has the slight villager lead. Obviously, the efficiency has got to be way down here right now. But I mean, if these camels and their attack speeds enough here, it, this could be a full clear apart. Like, I feel like this is a situation where if you had half knight, half camel and you engage against the crossbows and the camels, you win. But because camels are so squishy, as you call it, against uh, crossbow numbers, that maybe Tato's crossbow numbers would yeah. would still be enough here. We'll see soon. And they also don't deal enough damage, right? Like, yep. the crossbows just last a long while. The crossbows are missing armor, though. I, I would like to see that from Tato, especially when you're up against, uh, when you're on, on archer units, like like Expo or CA, and you're up against, let's say, Camels or, or Lycav, the armor upgrades become so much more important than, let's say, if you were up against uh, Knights. Just because it's a lot more likely that that one extra armor means an extra hit uh, yep. than against a higher damage. Whereas unit. with Knights, they're going to just kill you anyways. Like yep. A. Yep. Tato's investing into a lot right now. But again, he gets to back away. This is the second time, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's poking. Poking goes back. Poking yeah. goes back. I, I just I don't know how you get that balance, right? The balance is incredible. So many players go that far in and then they get they get swarmed on. Yeah, yeah. Jordan also playing it very safely, like he's taking no risks. Uh, it, unless Tato goes in to a position where he will deal massive damage, Jordan's just not taking the fight. I mean he also knows. Uh Imperial Camel are a thing. So he's yeah. trying to get there. Uh, very patient oh, man. by both. That is, it's crazy army composition though. Like crossbow, camel, 25 crossbows, camels with 145 HP. Ballistics coming in. I mean, it's the time. It's the, the time I was hitting. Uh, I was talking about right. Expos with with upgrades, enough camels to mid shield and snipe siege, and then you just take one big fight. If you get tumbering on these crossbows, they're gonna absolutely melt the camel. If you can have like triple Meganel though with your camels and get a push going. I think you can actually push this back, but it's the siege that's really going to matter the most. There's the armor upgrade you want at heart. Tato hoping to go up the hill, which is normally risky on this map. Yeah. So let's see if he if he pokes again. <laughs> where are the mangonels? Like they were on the left. They were on the left yeah, because gone. that's where he saw him last. They're like guys, wait. <laughs> Remember, Tato doesn't know about this gold. This gold is fully unprotected on the hill. Yeah. But he knows he's been seen, and he knows his opponent could show up at any point. I guess the gold's almost gone now. This is risky. I, I would like to see Tato buying Thumbring right now. Just a market, buy some wood, buy some uh, food, get Thumbring. It's going to be... Like, if, if, if a fight happens right now and you don't have Thumbring, you could actually lose it just uh -huh. because you don't have Thumbring. I mean, if he goes too far around here, he, c he can not get home if melee units are actually good against him. Mm -hmm. One big shot and we could be going to a game five. This is to determine who goes into the semifinals directly after the group stage, which of course ends today. Big potential engagement here for Tato. Jordan's got to get away. No. That was Jordan just trying to get a feel for where Tato is. Let's go to Tato's point of view now. See Tato, now he's blue on his screen. But he sees the light cap there, easy kills for him. Starts to back away again. Lots of outposting, which is great. No. No. Just avoids the siege there. And he's getting plus two armor for his camels. This might be all in Castle Age for Tato, but he's got to decide now because to me it looks like those resources mean imp soon or just a big flood of army, right? He's so close. Like uh, It seems like he wants to take at least one big fight before he goes to imp. Oh, does he see that? Can we see his fog of war? Does Tato see that? Does he see that castle's going up because of the mining camp? He does see it. Yes. His army's on the way there. He's got another group as well. It's hard to deny a castle with camels. He also is, huh? is so <laughs> excited about this that he has to Man, be careful here. Out of position. Oh, Tato's split micro was so good here. 
The Mega Nose will go down. The Crossbows have a hill as well. And I don't know about this one for Jordan. Still not tumbling. The Crossbows should be shredding the Camels, yeah, though. And the Saracen Crossbow Camels enough. have so much HP. They have so much HP. They're, dealing, they're tanking enough. The Crossbows are on the hill. They're dealing massive damage. Wow. I really would have. I mean, I, mean, I know I'm insisting on that, but, but I think he should have done a uh, thumbring over plus two armor on the camos. It okay. Makes more sense. All right. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, wins the fight. Thumbring can still anyway, come. And goes up. Yep. Jordan's just built a castle, which Tato will see. Tato moved away from that as well, and now I'm expecting Tato to fit a castle somewhere close to that so he can trev. And this army comp is just insane. Like, okay, Jordan's mangonels were out of position. So if you look at that, you could just say, well, Jordan was out of position. But why was he over there? Those things have been rolling back and forth because yeah. of Tattoo's arrival to different spots. So that, that is just amazing, it. amazing unit control from Tato. Cool damn switch. Mm. Desperation, maybe? Yeah, I think he's out of it. He doesn't know how. I mean, I, I don't think he needed to switch to another unit. I think he just needed to, like, maybe position himself a bit better with the Mangonels and then go for aim grounds. Mm -hmm. The issue there is that the issue w there was that the Mangonels got caught. Um, Unprotected, right? Yep, yep. yep. Uh, because if you had three or four mangonels and you use them to aim ground well, suddenly it's also a hard engagement for Tato to take. Yep. That TC is going to go down. Those are Saracen archers. Saracen archers destroy buildings. Those camels are underneath the TC. It's not Garrison there from Jordan because he's looking elsewhere. He's also raiding with camels somewhere. But Tato's about to hit him. Tato is tied economically, and as long as he doesn't take any big losses here, Tato will click upgrades that will probably finish off Jordan. And will send Tato to the semifinals. He will have two days off. Gets to watch everybody else play, except for the other player that gets the bite of the semis, which will most likely be Hera. And that heart is also big because you get to avoid playing against Hera before that potential final, right? Yep. They had a crazy series yesterday, which went 3-2. So a lot of people, I think, are hoping for a potential rematch. But if you if you think that's the biggest matchup at NAC5, you would want that to be in the finals. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, th there's some players that are showing such high skill level at this tournament that there are so many good matches, e even um, after this. G and the GG's well called, Jordan says, GG, well played, beast. And that's exactly respect. what Tato is, honestly. He has Tato looked so insane. People were saying the series between Tato and Hera yesterday was like one of the best sets they've ever